We are back once again, motherfuckers. And we are chilling in my brother Joe's Violent J's office once again. And we are joined to my right by none other than Gunther, the dog. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you can get in my camera. My man Manny. Yay, yay. That's Ed McManny. Violent J over <laughs> here. <McManny>. Yeah. <laughs> and sitting at the desk, Shaggy Tuto. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All yeah. right. And tonight we're going to be discussing stories from the road. Not the road, but stories from uh, basically <laughs> touring. Uh, 25 only, years of stories, man. Yeah, 25 years of touring stories, not only in the United States, but also overseas, uh, Australia, all throughout Europe. Wow. You know, man. basically covering everywhere that we've been. Fucking 25 years solid of fucking touring, a quarter right. of a fucking century. <laughs> right. Holy shit, when you put it like in terms like that, a quarter of a fucking century, holy shit, now, man. Before, That's a long time. Before covert hit, we were basically, would you say we would tour like probably like 40% of the year or maybe like 50% of the Something year? Something like that, yeah. would be spent yeah. like actual touring. Like, yes. You know what I mean? Doing shows and whatnot. Yes. Doing the gatherings. How festivals. much have been spent? 40% of yeah. the year. Uh, what, every year? Like since? Every year, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's think about that. Let's see. We do a couple months in spring, a couple months in the fall. That was around four months, where like a, like about a month yeah, worth of shit in the middle. Yeah, recently fell into that. Pat. About about, but yeah, about forty percent. Over the last of the four or five years. About, yeah, yeah. And about, then you're not including weekends, it, right? Shots. Exactly. So about forty no, percent. But got, before it, that, before we right. fell into that though, like back back in like the fucking early two thousands, nineties and shit. I'd say it was like sixty percent. Easy, easily sixty percent, probably more than that. But that that's just playing it very very fucking right. safe. You know what I'm saying? A great, great deal. Because not because I mean back then though. We'd be traveling a lot, like besides touring. You know, say we were always flying to New York and LA, or flying to LA to do videos or uh, press or video shoot or you know what I'm saying. It'd always be something that we'd be out of town for. Yeah, we'd be away from home. Exactly. Oh, wow. You know what I'm saying. So it wasn't just doing shows. It was just like when we weren't on tour, we were constantly out of town doing shit as well. You know what right, I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, wow. And I, I think these stories should also include like you know doing those specialty shows, the one-offs, and all that, because that's also being on the road. Yeah, it's basically, I, mean, I got my shit written anytime, down, but I know hearing you guys just spark some other shit. I'm like, yeah. oh fuck, fuck what I wrote down. You know, what anytime I'm saying? we were basically away from home is the road, right? You know, being yeah. out on the road, basically. You know, so it covers all that. Except we're not going to really get into the gathering stories because that would be a whole nother. That'd be a whole nother yeah, that's episode. A whole nother. Yeah, that's a, that's a whole nother three that'd be a, hours. That'd be like a series of episodes, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I, I wanted to I wanted to start off talking about um, the early, early days being on the road, uh, promotional tactics. Now, uh, I know I know I know a lot of ninjas know this, but we started off like dirt fucking poor. So like our promotional tactics was literally driving around in a van, right? No money for a hotel. Oh, fuck there would no. be like sometimes like three ninjas in the van, you know, and we'd press up a bunch of CD samplers and flyers. Mm-hmm. And we had the boxes on lying in the back of the cargo vans. Yeah, and you get to sleep at a rest area on top of the fucking on top of the the, the box of CDs. Here's the thing, though, and man. if you did, if you were lucky enough to have scrape up enough money for a hotel room, yeah. it'd be like four of you in one single hotel room. <laughs> right. Yeah. So you'd split the bed. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And you would just risk risk whatever the kind of funk was on that box spring. Right. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times you pull it off, it'd be like fucking rubbers or like shit stains. <laughs> right. So much because of course they weren't quality. What well, don't matter what hotel it doesn't matter quality or not. People are nasty. Yeah. But yeah, man, it was it was pretty fucking trife. So, yeah, I mean, we did that too when we first started touring in vans. You know what I'm saying? Mm. We'd be soaking wet in Fago, and the fucking van would be our dressing room. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Oh, wow. So you go right off stage, right into a fucking freezing cold van in a blizzard. Right. You know what I'm saying? Trying to dry <laughs> off and shit. Then you go to the fucking uh, rest area and go to bed for the night. You and know what and we didn't have any like tour bus drivers back no, then. Fuck like, no. so if we had a series of shows, we would do the show, get in the van. Drive. We didn't have mm-hmm. a designated driver. Hold like, on, no, man. Like, hold on, man. Whoever, oh, who, hold on. Whoever was driving would have to work the next day. Right. So sometimes and you then drive. And whoever was in the passenger seat had to stay up so the driver didn't fucking right. fall asleep. Let's too. keep it real, though. While, you know we, while we're sitting here talking about how hard it was, let's keep it real. 
It was nothing but the shit. Oh, it was funny. Oh, yeah, I went no, trade because here's the deal. I went trade for the nothing. Deal. Right now, I know it sucks to hear. I get that. You know what I'm saying? I don't like to hear my favorite artist getting old either. I hate it. I hate <laughs> right. to fucking hear that shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but nobody can escape the trials and tribulations of human life. Nobody. All right? I don't give a fuck who you are, what you do. Nobody can escape age. Nobody can escape... You know, sickness, depression, mm-hmm. whatever. Everybody is accessible to that shit, all right? But the point is, our younger bodies could handle that shit. Right. Sleeping on a bunch of cords in the back of the bus. Fuck yeah. Or in the right. back of the, like a, a van. van. Right. Didn't mean right. shit, you know what I no. mean? No. Changing in a freezing yeah. cold van. You'd wake up you, fine. You were so fucking athletically right. fucking mm-hmm. capable. It didn't matter. And you didn't they, wake up they, sore, you know? What they sucked about it was the fact that you were doing it. I mean, physically, you were fine, you know what I'm saying? Mm. But maybe cold, but whatever. You shook it off. You were fucking And here's young. the deal, man. If anybody's wondering about age, man, some of these younger motherfuckers... You can work out every day, motherfucker. Work out every day, mm-hmm. all your life. All right, walk around this bitch fit like Bruce Lee. All right, when you get older, it's still gonna hurt. You know what right. I'm saying? You'll right. still look muscular, but your bones are gonna hurt. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if you sleep in the back of a bus on a bunch of crates and cables, back, I mean, back van, of a van, van on a bunch van, of yes, crates please. and cables, it's gonna hurt today as opposed to when you were 22. You know what I mean? Right. All right. So that's yeah. the shit, though, man. All that shit. No, it, 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 like all yeah. that shit, like all the fucking, all the dues we paid, all, all the fucking crazy fucking staleness that we endured, like you know, what I'm saying that via the do, dunes, dunes, the dues, and the dunes too. Uh, <laughs> it all built what we are now. You know, say it built the yeah. character. You know, I wouldn't trade it for nothing. You know what yeah. I'm saying? It's like that. That's what. That's what made us. What the fuck? That's what got us to where we are so, going, man. Uh, our promotional tactics. We had a staple gun. Which is our main thing, the mm-hmm. staple gun. Yeah. Cause Jump out. Like, yeah. we would, we would, uh, okay, so we would hit all the record stores during the day, try to set up displays, you know. We would uh, hit up concerts as they were letting out, passing out the CDs. And then we would hit the schools at night or the college campuses with the staple gun, just putting them on telephone poles or on trees, like flyers, you mm-hmm. know, for, for ICP, just flyer, flyer, flyer. And we got so good at it. We knew when the cops were coming. We always right, seen yeah. them. It was just ninja into a backyard, wait yeah. for them to pass. They'd be looking for us because people would be calling. Yeah, hey, they're fucking, fucking up the thing. So we would like keep our eyes open whenever cars were coming by because when it came time to staple gun or hang up signs or whatever, we'd do that shit crazy mm-hmm. late at night. So if we seen a car coming, it was probably a cop. Especially like you know slapstick and that shit. You know yeah. what Every saying? fucking flyer we hung, everything we did, man, every sample we gave out felt like it's, it was all the shit, man. It's yeah, like we yeah. wanted it so bad. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We wanted it so and bad. And that was the only way that we could obtain it. That you know what I'm saying? Every fucking time we hung out a sampler, it felt good. Like, wow, that ninja is bumping that shit right, right now, probably. You know what I mean? Right. And, yeah. and if you're an artist and, and you want your foot in the door, you want to make some success, man, this ain't work. None of that shit was work, man. It, was, <laughs> right. it wasn't like, how'd you guys deal with that shit? Man, we wanted success right and, and like you are, and nobody put us on you know what i'm saying so like that, that for us to make it that was necessary you know what i'm saying because if, if somebody don't put you on how the fuck do you get your name out there you know what i'm saying you just sit on your ass and not do yeah. shit and fuck sure no. there's ways now to right. do well, it over yeah, the internet you can, yeah you can sit there and, and, and whatever school it really but you quick. still have to put in work though but you know you still, what i'm saying but there's nothing like a motherfucker getting out of a van right with a giant fucking Riddle box snake Make it tongue, a spectacle. On the side of right. It, and yeah. giving you a sampler in the palm of your hand. Right, exactly. Those, those people remember that shit. Mm-hmm. Like, wow, this ninja just yeah. to me. Right. You know? Today, to this yeah. day, you see so, people, they're like, yo, I remember when I was in high school, I saw those fucking vans pull up, man. Right. It was crazy. Yeah. Like, you know we what hear that all the so, time. Yeah. Our vans were in effect. Mm-hmm. So we had, we had like, we usually had a rap van that we were doing this promotion in. And it would have the, the Joker's card or whatever, right, on, on the side of it. So... We literally handed out like a million fucking flyers. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's probably not even an exaggeration. Mm-hmm. Like, when yeah. we did a promotional tour, we're talking about a million fucking flyers. And when we left the city, we were usually in one city for probably about three days at a time before we went to the next city, like the next major city. And when we, when we were like day two in that city, Every ninja we ran into, we were passing out a flyer or CD. They were like, oh, shit, I seen the signs right. on the freeway. They knew oh, we shit, were there. Oh, shit, right. mm-hmm. I seen the flyer at my school. Right, yeah. Or yeah. I seen the flyer on my street. 
Like, they, like everyone yeah. seen that shit. Because we would because hit we every were... side of town. <laughs> yeah. you know, we hit east side, west side, north side, south side, middle, fucking southwest, northwest, east west, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Whatever the fuck. We had hit it so fucking thoroughly, oh, so you know what I'm hard. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> fuck yeah, man. Yeah, so the, they they had it worked. Like the the shit was working. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And uh, and and we schooled it as hard as we could, it, you know. And and it, you know, I feel like it it paid off because we weren't following any textbook. We weren't following anybody else's tactics. This is just what we decided to do. Right. Yeah. Like yeah. this is how we got to go. We got to go hard as fuck on these cities. Getting the word out so people yeah. see it so much. What, what you say is so they're important. They're like, let y'all. me peep it out. What you Fuck said it, is so you know? important. There was absolutely no fucking blueprint for us. No. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we really were following wasn't. nobody. Right. Nobody gave us advice. Nobody fucking right. gave us the way to do it. You know what I'm saying? But we knew that was the way to do right. it. Right, because there was no other way to do it. You know what I'm saying? You had to get out there but, and bust that. But ain't get nobody, your name out there. How do you do that? You I feel fucking like, show it in people's faces. I feel like nobody was doing it as hard as we were absolutely. doing it. Absolutely. Oh, not, not even fucking close. Absolutely Maybe, not. maybe Esham. Okay, maybe each time. But not I, on a national scale. Yeah, but you know, in the city and all that, I yeah, did not see on a national scale. I did though. see a lot of promo promotional shit coming from uh, real life productions and stuff. But like other than Esham, there was nobody that even came close to what we were fucking doing. You know what I'm saying? Hey Rob, how did you yeah. how did you decide which which cities you were gonna hit up? Well I mean Yeah, we started off with just like you know, like Toledo, Michigan, um, Illinois, like we yeah. started with just that. Yeah, like, the Flint, like we, Toledo, Flint, Detroit, and Toledo were our first big. Yeah, thing, we start. Well, that actually, was, we started in Detroit, like yeah, just hitting that up hard as fuck. Then Flint, then Toledo. But then we expanded out, and everywhere we expanded that promotion, ICP grew in those areas. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we would do, like I'm talking back in the beginning, you know, you guys would do a show in fucking Toledo or, or Chicago or Detroit, and it'd be packed. You go outside of that area though, and there was hardly nobody. You know, yeah. there'd be like crazy. I mean, small... that, that's. I mean, that, this ain't really a story I'm kicking off with, but just yeah. right quick. I mean, we used to talk about that all the time. Yeah. Back in the day, when like our first actual, like one of our first tours we went on was with Onyx and Daz Effects. Right. And we were playing yeah. to like, you know, we opened the whole show up. You know what I'm saying? And this was what 1995, I think it was, and um, we were playing like smaller venues, and there would only be. Like 30, 40 people in them. How geek were we to get that tour, though? Man. We were actually bumping on <laughs> yep. then. Yeah, yeah, they were like the shit, you know? And, and Dow's effects had kind of run their course with they want effects and shit, you know what I'm saying? Okay, uh, but for anybody, was an effect. anybody watching this right now, hold on, let, let me just say this. Anybody watching this right now, write those names down. Das Effects, it's D A S and then E F X. Das Effects and Onyx. And the thing about Onyx is when you look at their videos, like Slam. Da, 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 da. Let the boys be boys. Yeah. Throw your guns in the air yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and all this shit. Those motherfuckers, I don't care what anybody says, they're fresh today. Oh, no, no yeah, question. Right. Oh, yeah. They're no, fresh today. That yeah, shit is fresh today. On, Onyx blew the fucking doors open on, on people moshing in fucking rap shows and shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Right the fuck up. No Slam, question. Slam diving out the stage. Crowd surfing, all that no, shit. Saying, yeah, Onyx, Onyx, Onyx started that today. shit in rap. If I was just, if I was running a label, all right, which... I am, but it's not. We're not. We're not. We're not. We're not, uh, we're not really looking for talent. You know right, what I'm right, right, right. We're just focused on ICP. They got. They got all the talent we need. But um, uh, uh, if I was an A and R at a major label, Def Jam or something, you know what I'm saying? And I came across Onyx right, right. now. Right. Yeah. It right was, now, maybe yeah, it's the, it's maybe it's the old me. I don't know, but I would be like, this is fire. Right. Yeah. You know the, the intensity. Mm-hmm. They got the ball heads, all four of them, oh, yeah, and right. they're just me mugging you. Yeah, yeah, right. you know. They're all like, <laughs> yeah, it's so fresh, you know. And uh, the the boots and the camouflage gear yeah, and right. all this shit. It's it was so right. hard, you know. Right. And um, they were the shit. And Thoughts Effects, when they came out in like what ninety two or something, something like that. Yeah. They completely. They did that whole Flint. rickety rickety no, shit. The hip hop world. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's from, nothing right now. It, no, I they they flipped it. They flippity flipped it. They flippity flipped it. They came up with a flippity diggity diggity diggity. Like they fucking schooled it. And when they did that shit, your favorite rappers started doing that shit. Yeah. I'll never forget when Willie D. Right. Put that record Cube, out. Cube did the shit. You know, everybody you know, started doing Willie shit. Willie D's my favorite just right. rapper. He's just always like. <laughs> Willie D's always just, his lyrics, he's just a great player. just so like, yes. forward and but fuck this you record wish. came out, this Ghetto Boys record, and he was flipping it on there. Yeah. And I don't want to hear Willie D flipping, you know what I mean? <laughs> right. But Dr. Fuck's, that sound was so, 
Oh, um, mimicable. It was yeah. so fucking in style. Right. Everybody was doing that shit. Duggity, biggity, giddy. You know, and um, man, and so we, next thing you know, it's like, that was like 92. Daz Effects probably had their success wave. Maybe, maybe, maybe 89. I don't know. No, but, no um, it was in the 90s. Daz, sure. or Onyx put a second album out in 95. And that was Beginning just as fresh. It was it different. Was dope. It was different as fuck. It wasn't as like fucking hard in your DG face. Evil but it was rough. it was equally no, 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 no. no. trust. Remember that? So okay, anywho, okay. so anyhow. Wait, wait, and then we got to about on tour. <laughs> we got the call for the tour. Yes. They were like, we want to put you guys, we want you guys to go out on tour with Onyx and Das Effects. We were just right. like, we're like, fuck the hell. We're up Onyx every day. We're like, right. fuck yeah. You so know? so we, we, we set out in our in our fresh RV that, you know, that we rented that time with the fr- fresh, uh, are we in vans No, then? we did the three vans the We were in the tour. vans then. Yes, we were. Okay. So yep, we dropped yep, off 100%. Yep. The three vans, though. Wait to the first city. Yeah, three yeah, vans. Yeah, three like, vans. So anyhow, yeah, so like like what Rob was saying, you know what I'm saying? Man, it, we had to pay for gas and three vans. We didn't give yes. a fuck, man. <laughs> no, right. So anyhow, so yeah, so I mean, we'd be playing in small crowds, and then we'd be the first stack. Within seconds of getting up there, we'd be getting booed. You know what I'm saying? Right. Flying at us. And we, but we'd still finish our set, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Through all the booze and bullshit, we still trooped it out, you know what yeah. I'm saying? And um, But then... Oh, hold but on, then, hold on, before you get into that story. But then, I'm, well, this is can not I, really a story. Can I, no, stri- can I get to the booed part, though? The what? I remember uh, the, the getting booed off stage. I remember yeah. you guys, like, straight up toughing it out, though. Yeah, you would so say, say, we'd you stay, stay on the fucking stage. stay out there, right? Matter of fact, in Toronto and then, or Montreal, they had the fucking pit bulls and rock yeah, that's on stage. Yeah, bring up. Hold motherfuckers back from getting on stage and killing us. Look, uh, ninjas grabbed tables. Yeah. They were throwing whole tables yeah. at y'all up on stage. And the, 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 all the security what? was like, it was like a yeah. weird reggae club. I think it was in Montreal. Yeah. It was, matter a, it fact, was a, um, a yeah, roster club. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Matter of fact, fucking, I got left that day in fucking Canada, and they were having the, yeah. the worst <laughs> blizzard they had in history. It's a recorded history. Right. Yeah. And fucking all three of the bands, we went and got some snacks or whatever. I came out of the bathroom. Boof. Nothing. This was right. way before fucking <laughs> right, cell yeah. phones. Had yeah, no Canadian yeah. money. You know what I'm saying? Everybody Could, speaking Montreal yeah. French. Well, I was in shorts and a fucking pair of Jordans. You know what I'm saying? Could we just ran in to fucking eat. You know what I'm saying? On. Yeah, that sucked, man. I was like fucking just chilling. I couldn't go into stores. They kicked me out. I had no money. Anyway, but, uh, uh, so anyhow. Uh, anyway, real, real quick. I, I know you're getting to it, but uh, I want to bring up to Onyx. Daz Effects and Group Home, who was also Oh, yeah, sorry, Group Home was on it. Yeah. Because you were a Group Home mark after I that. I fucking love Group yeah. Home. I, I would sit out and watch them. Yeah. yeah. And I wouldn't even watch Onyx and Daz Effects. I'd just watch them every night. They went out I, right after us. Yeah. I was a super mark for Group Home. But anyway, uh, they they wouldn't give us the time of day. No, absolutely They would not, not. never talk to us, nope. nothing. I remember sitting custom with them. They wouldn't even look at us. Right, they, they were just like, New York. they were just wow. like, they just dismissed us. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, oh, these guys are scrubs, you know? Like, what the fuck wow. are they doing on this tour? Right, they, had, they, right, they didn't know about we us. We were scrubs. Probably, they didn't, they didn't probably, probably the label paid. They didn't want to know about us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, because yeah. we were on Jive then. Yeah, yeah. We, we, I remember going up to them at the customs. In, in New York, we were going yeah, into Canada. Remember that? We were just like, what the fuck? We're going into Canada. And then they got, they all got, got no the bus. Whole like, up. The whole tour was held up at the customs, right? So we're sitting in the customs. There's Onyx over there. Uh, so I'm like, fuck it, this is a chance to meet them, you know? So we, I go over there, and um, I'm introducing myself to the guys, and they looked at me like I was speaking another language, man. <laughs> Right. They didn't even sell, they no sold me so fucking from here hard. back to fucking yeah. Bangladesh. Right. They was just like, Mm-hmm. It was just awkward, yeah, right? Yeah. It was like a lot of tension. Like they didn't even know we were on the road. And I was like, right. okay, we're going to just, all right then. Yeah. Right. You know, <laughs> it, but the, when the tour came at Woodstock, their fucking DJ, the, the guy that was DJing for him, we saw him at Woodstock. Yeah, he was yeah, like, yeah. oh, what's up? Well, yeah, by Woodstock, right? <laughs> right. But, yeah. but, but, but uh, so we're on tour with them. We're getting violent. Don't, don't, don't steal my shit. Night. Don't steal my story. This is I, what I, I was, I was just going to get to Detroit. <laughs> yeah, that's oh, what I was going with it. Actually, it was Toledo first. <laughs> right. Toledo was It was, place. yes, because I remember it was that weird place in Toledo. But, like, yeah. you know, th- th- like you were talking about, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Anywhere outside of Detroit and Flint and Toledo, like, we weren't shit. But we were no, hot. Nobody knew. But, we, but, but at the time, when yeah. we went on tour with uh, Daz FX and Onyx, it's like, we were playing fucking playing like I, I 2,200 people at the Ritz I say in Detroit. I want to say something. You, you can just tell the rest if you like. My man, my man, <laughs> Sticky Fingers. It, my man, <laughs> Sticky Fingers. Shut hold on. My man, Sticky right. Fingers from Onyx is very plugged in. Like, he's always surprising me. That's my dog. We talk on text. All right. Yeah, right. And um, he's he might hear this. All right. So I want him to know this. I'm not dissing nobody. No, we ain't dissing about But, but I want him to know this. Here. We now learned that. When you made it and you're establishing in hip hop, and you got and you some, see some group that appears point. appears to be whack, right? Like, like on the tour, and you've never you heard of them. You know, selling them, 
That's the code of hip hop, man. That's the who's the new dude? Right. You don't you don't like new dudes, man. That's the code of hip hop. And now we're on the inside. Now we're giving them mean mugs. Right. <laughs> because <laughs> if somebody comes out appearing to be whack, damn right they get the ugly faces. Who's the new dude, man? You know, new dudes, fuck the new dude, you know what I'm saying? And um, until they do something to prove themselves, then it's like, okay, you get it. Right, you know what right. I mean? Yeah, so but anyhow, yeah, they weren't doing anything extra no, dickhead were, wise. Were, we didn't, we, we didn't, were just appearing we're just to be so dope. New to the, I mean, we were just so new to the game. We didn't know shit. You know what I'm saying? In our half clown hookups exactly. and shit. They were just like, what I mean, like, the fuck is this? You know? Yeah, I mean, we we just been local for four years. We didn't know shit about the rest of America. You know what, right. what I'm saying? We didn't know nothing. Um, and then by the time we got to Toledo, because, you know what I'm saying, we were selling out fucking mad places, big ass places Here. in Detroit. Detroit, Flint, and Toledo. You know what I'm saying? So when we got to Toledo, mm -hmm. shit got switched up. We had to go on last. We were playing a big fucking venue. Yeah. You know what Sold saying? out. And they didn't know what the fuck to They think. were like, what is... They were like, who the fuck are these guys? <laughs> right, because yeah. then everybody had face paint on. Right. And yeah. then we played fucking Detroit. Oh, Same oh, fucking oh, thing. Oh, I want to bring this I, well, up, I'm gonna, you can, Okay, you can we'll jump I'm right just, back into it. I'm so just, I'm almost done talking what okay, I got to talk. I'm you know sorry, what I'm saying? Sorry, yeah. So then, But then, abruptly, after we played Toledo and Detroit, we didn't do it. We stop. We jump right off that yeah. fucking tour. You forgot about Flint. We, well, yeah, I'm saying those three cities. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then All we right. just stayed in Detroit and they continued. Out. Yeah, yeah, we were like, no more. They getting booed off. Right? Yeah. Okay, we're, every, we're after that, there's no way we can go back and get booed every off. Every club we played on that tour was drawing like two to five hundred. Dog, you're you know? being very generous, dog. Okay, fine. Like two to like I'm like a hundred to three hundred. I mean, some some were yeah. really light, you yeah. know, and. We Which were. I remember were that. Then, I right? remember that we had that discussion. But rap shows weren't hot then. You know what I'm saying? I remember yeah. we had that discussion because we were like, we got to hold on until we get to our show. Yeah, like to in our, our shit. And, so we could school the fuck out of them. Right. So they were drawing like let's say two to four hundred or whatever. When you got to Toledo, two thousand. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. We got to Detroit, fifteen hundred. I think it was a like fifteen hundred club no, or something. It was like two thousand. So we were play? at the Ritz. Oh, it was a two thousand. Yeah, it was like twenty two thousand. It might even been back to back shows. Suddenly, yeah. we're taking all these so, pictures with them. And shit. Right. And then, and then <laughs> you guys went on before Onyx, right? And as soon as ICP went off, oh, like right, half like, the crowd no, left. Bro, we didn't. We had to go on last at all three of those shows. Oh, you guys went on last. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. I'm thinking of something else. Yeah, all three of us. We had to go on last all three of those shows. Are you positive? I, positive. I am positive. But here's the kicker. Yeah. It was all juggalos, mm -hmm. right? All juggalos, and we had to go on last. Yeah. And then Onyx was like, and God bless him for this. They were like, man, we need more money. <laughs> yep. You know. Yep. They wanted more money but, to play. But, but also, the house also, was so fat. But you know? also, we promoted those three shows. Right. You know what I'm saying? There was yeah. not a promoter that put that. It was psychopathic that was promoting those okay, three. Well, so they went right to Alex like, yo, we want more money, man. It's a sellout, this and that. Like, right. Hold, hold on a second. <laughs> Are you positive in Toledo you went on last? Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I remember, I remember I watching them. Remember going, I remember watching yeah. them play from like this upstairs weird dressing room. Okay, and there was like some weird like ledge on the stage that they were like jumping up on and shit. I remember one hundred percent. So one hundred percent, you guys went on last in Toledo. Yes. Okay. I, I think, think I'm because sure that was the first I'm night. That's the first night we did You're thinking of. You're thinking of. I remember the crowd leaving. Like what after you're they thinking of yeah, is the big show we did in Toledo with MC Breed, Outcast. Yeah. You know. um who else uh, was on uh, there? Fuck, I just remember Outkast. MC I Breed, remember Outkast, Breed fucking Too Short. Yeah, no, wow. Too Short was in Monroe. That was a different show. No, but I know. We I remember show. the Too Short but, show, of course. Yeah, because we turned that out, too. But and wasn't we, he on this one, too? Oh, Coolio. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I just remember Onyx, or uh, fucking Outkast was like the... the but that, like, Rob, is when they just <laughs> fired yeah. out. Yeah, Because that was, that was at the Toledo Sports Arena. And yeah. I remember that's like when we first were throwing Fago and shit. We had cans of fucking. Fago. I remember something crazy. Happened. And then we got a little bit of pop on the DJ's fucking turntable. Turn, like, uh, yeah, Six hundred dollars cleanup so, fee. We got some yeah. problems. The other, the other thing I remember is uh, when when we were doing the rest of the country. All those shows, it was just a lot of like you know people just kind of chilling oh, yeah, there, just looking. watching the show like like no energy. Even you know they were booing when you guys were up, but then afterwards they you know they were just like this. But then when you get to Toledo and Michigan, the whole crowd is like, oh, you know, just going crazy, right, you know? Right. It was just a like super hype. And then Onyx was just super jogging at that. They are cool after that. Group yeah. home, everybody. They're well, just you like, know what oh, mean? You, got, you shit. can't be trusting the white dudes, man. But, but it also made me realize how important all those promotions were. Because at that time, everywhere that we fucking hit up with heavy, heavy, heavy promotions was everywhere that you guys were hitting. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because all that needed to be done was 
to let ninjas know who you were, and right. that was it. That was a wrap. Yeah, you know, they, they, it was like, you know, that's why the more samplers and shit came it. into play. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Man, I'll never forget something that happened on yeah. the. Um, this is off the subject, but something happened on that 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 show. Um, Toledo show, that giant rap show. Yeah, it was a Toledo sports the, arena. The crowd yeah. was like half and half. Yeah, it was, it was really, like it was half really juggalos, weird. half like not half, juggalos. Right, half just like rap fans. Because right. there was a lot of rap fans there. And a lot yeah. of juggalos. Yeah, it was a big bill, man. Yeah, it was, it was a big Toledo bill. sports arena. Yeah. We were so fucking happy yeah, to that was be first on time that we, That was the first time yeah. we played like, there. Like, just yeah. to hear that commercial with all those names. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, then, and then, that's when, that's I mean, when Dead um, Body Man was number one on 96.3. Yeah, I, yeah, it was. We had, we had the number one. Because so that, 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 96.3 reached Toledo. So, like, we were, like, mad in effect in Toledo, too. You know what I'm saying? You know what? The number one You do realize what all that was about, right? Having the number one song in Detroit. What do you mean? What that was about? I don't know. You don't remember it. I bet, you, guarantee you don't remember it. No, I don't Nobody understand the line of questioning. What, what, what that was about? about? Why what? our song was on the radio? <laughs> what? Okay, let me explain it. You will remember when I tell you. I'm sure I will. Yeah. Okay. So we're in Detroit. There's a radio station called 96.3, mm-hmm. right? And every Sunday night they had the hip hop explosion. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. With the fucking way back then. Yeah, yeah. Ron P and, and, and yeah, um, Reggie Hotmix. Reggie Hotmix. Yeah. And, and it was a hip hop explosion. They were the first ones to ever play dog beats mm-hmm. on, on, um, yeah, on, yeah. On the air. They, they, so, they mix it in. I remember it. I remember like yesterday. They mix it in with fucking uh, tongue twister. The song was Mr. Tongue Twister. Yeah, mixed into that. Yeah. So um, they mixed out of the song into that. So Alex was going down to all the stations, making a proper meeting, you know, to talk with the radio station, and he was presenting the songs, like our, whatever our single was. He'd go down there and present it to the station. So he went down there and he presented. Something off Riddle Box. Mm-hmm. It wasn't Dead Body yeah, Man. See, we were like, that, Dead right. Body Man will never be on the fucking radio. Oh, oh, you know course, what I mean? Yeah. It was something else. Like right. probably a little something, something or something. You know what I mean? Like a right. radio edit. Mm-hmm. But it was definitely not the, uh, Dead Body Man. But de- 96.3, Alex had the meeting down there. Mm-hmm. And 96.3, all of a sudden, started spinning Dead Body Man. Like with the cuss words flipped. Yeah, yeah. And we, it didn't was, give him a, uh, we didn't give him an edit of it, right? It was the... Craziest shit you heard on the station, right. because yeah. <laughs> I mean it was like a sore, sore thumb. Yeah, it was. It was like they're playing like Will Smith. We took the number one spot from Offspring. Keep it separated. Yeah, wow. that was the number one spot. That's who we knocked yeah. out of number one. Was Offspring? Keep it separated. So, no, no. Yeah. Okay, hundred percent it was. I Hold on, man. Here's what happened though. It was. It was. It was. It was hip hop and R and B. Yeah, but they still played it was like pop hip- too. Yeah, they played here's what like that. Though. Yeah, they st- here's what happened, man. Don't change the subject. I'm not. It was right along with it. I don't want to hear you fucking no, talk. About- He's breaking into your fucking stories, guy. You're I'm breaking your shit up. Your your know, I, I, hold on. I feel like we're all jumping over yeah, each other like crazy are. hard. Everybody just stay the fuck we're out of each other's stories. Fucking crazy hold excited. Here, here, here we go. Here we go. Everybody stay the fuck out of each other's stories right, until you're done with it. But, but then I, you can. You add need shit. a special thing to hold. <laughs> that you're the story. Here, yeah, you need to hold the sheep. You hold the sheep. You hold the sheep. And you get stabbed if you fucking speak. Why are you stalking them? <laughs> I got the sheep. Right. That's like the fucking speaking baton. That's, like the, that's the conch. The sad you know what I'm saying? That's the original style. sheep. That's the, fucking conch. the original yeah. sheep. The not, original. That yeah. not the iron bullshit. sheep. <laughs> the yes. original sheep. All right. Okay, anyhow, go ahead. Yes. That's a great. This is the holy grail. You speak with this. Yes. Right? So, um, you hold it up? I mean, <laughs> just fan. to let everybody know you're, you're speaking rightfully. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, I don't remember what our story was. Oh, uh, we talk about how we got on the radio. Yeah, I just got a short little thing I was going to say. Um, so, yeah. Oh, about the, how we got on the radio. That's right. That's we we sidetracked into that. Um, um, okay. Here's how we got on the radio, Joey. That's why your, your, your theory of us bumping offspring off the number one spot is fucking up my story. Oh, my because this is the way I remember it happening. I swear to God. Okay, go ahead, man. So, there, uh, 96.3 was playing like Will Smith. Mm-hmm. Lame shit, right? And um, also you just hear dead bodies, dead bodies all over the street. Right. It just was so crazy, right? Yeah. And every time they spun it at night, it was playing every hour. Yeah. It and I'd be laying rotation, in bed right? sleeping. We were living in a cast corridor. The fucking song would come on the air. I would wake up every night. Like every time they spun mm-hmm. it, I would wake up just to hear if the DJs mentioned it, what they talked about. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then like, you know, if people call up, we want to hear a uh, uh, dead body, man, ICP. Like the phone calls coming in, everything was number one. They'd have their top five at five mm-hmm. or whatever, you know. It was number one every time, you know. And um, all of a sudden, 
All of a sudden on that station, Rob, mm -hmm. you heard this one day. We're in Alex's I know, basement. I know exactly what you're hearing. playing, up, yeah. right? Yeah. The station's on. And all of a sudden you heard... You let me violate you. That Nine Inch Nails song? Yeah. It's like, I want to fuck you like an animal. And we were like, what's this doing on, on 96.3? They, they used our song to kill the old format. Oh, oh yeah. okay. It was like okay. suicide yeah. to the old station. Right. They brought our song in. Everybody that loved the station was like, what the fuck is this? I think they did not anticipate the amount of juggalos. Right, that people that were like, oh, they were I out see. there calling to hear it. Right. But they used our song. Right, I did forget that. Yeah. To bring death to 96.3. That's how and you... they reopened a whole nother format. Right. Suddenly right. there was no rap. And they, they, that wasn't the first time they did that in Detroit. They did that with Vanilla Ice, Ice Ice Baby. Yeah. I can't remember what station was. They spun it 24 but hours in a row. 24 hours straight, they played Ice Ice Baby. Then they had a countdown that was like from like. Fucking like like a hundred thousand down to zero. Then stations to used shit. to do that, Rob. They used to no, yeah, kill the stations yeah, yeah, yeah. and then reinvent themselves. Right. So ninety six point three was gone. All of a sudden, it was playing all Pearl Jam, Alice in yeah, Chains, like Nine Inch Nails, yeah. and all the rap was gone. Yeah, and yeah. they used our fucking song <laughs> to kill as the careers as the suicide yeah. of the station. That's right, because we're sitting that. in Alice's basement. In the minute that Nine Inch Nails shit yeah, came out. We went from number one to not even on there to gone. <laughs> right. right, like they, we didn't fade out, Rob. We didn't right. fall off the charts. Right. You never there heard of no charts. Right. We were literally <laughs> number one right. yesterday. Right, and right. the next day we're like, why ain't they playing it? You know, Damn. it was gone. Yeah, we and like, they used our on. song to do it, man. Mm -hmm. Right, got to. And that was yeah. it. And, and suddenly they were alternative, but they and they were called Power ninety six. But they can never were... take that away from us that we had no. number one hit on their fucking. On they didn't their, expect that though. Fuck no, they did. They were just saying. Dead body man, like dead they, death to the song. Because, because, death, that, death to the station, because after Dead Body Man started hitting, they started playing Sunshine from East Shop. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. All right. But so, uh, that wasn't even an official story. The whole. Honestly, oh, now, now? Just, I guess it was. Oh yeah, my bad. Now, um, the other story. Quick little thing I was just gonna say about the show at the Toledo Sports Arena. That big ass hip hop show. They put us on there. Just hearing the commercials was insane. Hearing Outkast, Coolio. Coolio had hits yeah, was, at that moment. Yeah, he had Fantastic Voyage. Was like yes. A big oh, yeah. shit. That was Coolio before was hitting that was before, at that moment. Before Gangsta's Paradise. It was like yeah, and, and, and Breed was on it. And Breed had yeah. to the beach yeah, show. Yeah, he had no future in the front. Yeah. 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 So I just anyway, remember Outkast. I don't remember the whole bill, but Outkast, I know it was a big rap show. Shut the fuck up. I got the Sheik. Sorry, Sheik. <laughs> Thank you, Sheik. Anyway, um... I remember it was half and half at the crowd, like half hip hop fans, half juggalos. And um, and I remember I'm doing a show and we're getting all kinds of love. There's mad juggalos in the crowd, you know what I mean? But there were a couple of people that had no idea what the fuck we were we were right, doing, yeah, right? Of course. And we had a whole show on stage. Yeah, we brought we brought an ICP show. Yeah. You know, straight up. And uh, and I remember there was this this group of like looked like maybe four black kids from um probably from Toledo, you know what I mean? Probably, probably I don't yeah. know, they just weren't hit to us, you know. But I remember the dude in the front looked a little bit older than the other dudes. But the dude in the front was flipping me off double birds, you know, and he was right on the edge of the stage. And I remember I leaned all the way down, put my knee right, and got, like, right in his face and flipped him off back. Because he was just holding him up, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I just stuck my finger right in his face, you yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then, I'll never forget it. it was so awesome. <laughs> when I came back, that dude was like, <laughs> like, <laughs> get him out! Yeah. Like, like, he was like, all right, you won my respect. Right, right. Yeah. You, you weren't a You know what I'm saying? You Suddenly, all four of those dudes were getting live. Yeah. And I was like, that was so awesome! Yeah. Yeah. And I, I had him smacking their hand and everything, you know, it was all good. Like, once he was flipping me off, he wanted to see if I was going right. to take that shit. Or just, you being know. Punk or not, man. And I was like, fuck you too, man, I'm going to be trying with everything I got, you know? And he was like, respected, you know what I mean? Yeah. It was just fresh, man. Hell yeah, right. hell yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> To change somebody in in the middle of a concert, right? You know what I'm saying? That's, that's like he was awesome. giving it up by the end of the set. He was like, yes. "This is dope. I get it." You know, like after a couple more songs and shit, it was fresh, man. Just a fresh moment. All right, fresh. Who's, who needs to see? All right, who's oh, gonna tell shit. an authentic story now? That wasn't like an actual kickoff to my stories. Oh, no. oh the key. I, I, I want I want to just talk about the. Well, here, uh, throw it to Rob then. Oh, fuck. Okay. There you go. I wanted to talk about just the. Uh, you know the, the 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 rules of the road, if you will. Like like back in the day, like when we entered. Now this is like past the Onyx phase, like just going into starting a tour and getting out there and hitting the road. 
the crowds grew and they grew and they grew until pretty much everywhere we went, we could draw at least like, you know, you guys are drawing at least like 500 people. You know what I'm saying? Some, some areas that were hot would go up to like 4,000 ninjas. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, we had like a code, like all of us, like once the money started rolling in, we were all in the leather jackets. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. We had the psychopathic bad boys that yeah. you, you can still find to this day. We always believed at... the whole crew. Yeah. We always had a, a uniform for our crew. From day yeah, one. that's what I'm saying. The uniform. For right, our, right. our road crew. You see all yeah. these other bands. They would have just... You wouldn't even know who's in, right. who, who they're working for. He's got all these... You know, they, they have a Rolling Stones shirt on. You know, <laughs> it, it, maybe with the rap group. Yeah. And the dude would be like a burnout. Right. You know, right, tight yeah. jeans. He wouldn't even know who he's with. Right. But yeah. all our guys had to wear black and red. Yep. You know, yeah, we had a dress do. code. Yeah, we right. had dress codes, man. So when we came rolling into a club, like, motherfuckers were, like, in... You could see it on their face. They were like, oh, shit, who are these guys? It was almost like a gang. Damn, that's you know that's I mean? one of the greatest things. It was. It was like, you know... Because we, we still get that, that, that reaction. The crispy... Mm-hmm. Yeah, the crispy leather jackets, fucking big hatch man on the back, just let motherfuckers know. You know what I mean? we come all walking in, and we'd be, like, 20 deep, all wearing the same shit, checking out the club, and you see everybody with their mouths open, like, what the Man, fuck? Man, I remember the first thing Billy used to do yeah. when he walked into a club. All right, hold on. Hey, yeah, the... I was going to get oh, that. Oh, the sheet. Go ahead. Go ahead. The fucking... You got You're the talking sheet about the fl- Yeah, the sheet, man. Yeah. All right, no, but no, you can jump in. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but, uh, but the sheet gives a fuck. We would hang the two fucking flags on either side of the stage. The hatchet flags. The hatchet man flags. That's the first thing we did. And I'm going to tell you the second thing we did. This first thing, the hatchet man flags. And then me and Tom Doug came up with the karma boost. We would play MC Hammer. This had, this went out for years. Get it you guys were a lot of times might have been sleeping. You caught it a couple times, but we play MC Hammer's "Turn This Mother yeah. Out," and then the whole crew would be dancing in the floor, like just get live, like turn this mother out. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> fucking song. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And we'd be like dancing. Doing I don't care what kind of hype. pop star MC Hammer became. That song was Let's always see. the best. That oh, let's yeah. get started. Man. Come on, dog. Them are two fucking Those boys, two man. Dog. And then we would get the fucking work. You know what I'm saying? We, we'd all, you know, once all that was established, <laughs> yeah. that was like the code. That was the code of the road. You know what I mean? Like that's how we did things. And and it worked, man. It was just, and it's still karma not only in us, but everybody that's seen it. You know what I mean? There Turn was, this mother out was the jail. Yeah. Yeah. Still is. Yeah. Oh, like shit. Yeah. You put that, you put Turn you this put, mother you, out. If, 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 if you're the chill, like, in the bus mother. or whatever, you got everybody's just playing jams, getting down, you know what I'm saying? If you put a turn this mother out or let's get it started, motherfuckers be like, ah! Here's our search. Here's our search. Ah! Yo, to big MC, MC Hammer. <laughs> we can <laughs> do turn this mother out. Everybody's doing this fuck. All about shit. That's the CD went. That's way to go, Rob. You just started it. Blowing on my eardrum. Fuck. Let me get the fucking air horns out. Listen, a little known fact or unknown fact. I actually did a remake of that song. For the fly- Master of the Flying Guillotine album, it did not make the cut. No, because you can't it was make so a bad. song like that. But uh, Joey was on it. And yeah, I was too big MC. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> you can't so, remake a classic like but that. But maybe maybe we can unearth the song just to, to put it out there for free because it's so bizarre. <laughs> it's so bizarre. Oh, but, uh, but anyway, but that song exists. It's in the archive somewhere <laughs> Look, very man, deep. And we can buy it. Let me tell you about right how there. I explain this to my son, all right? <laughs> Some songs you don't remake. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, I should have known that right. trying to read. What'd you mm-hmm. what'd you mean? Turn this one I'm out? a fucking novice. I'm not I'm not like what'd a you professional mean, this rapper extraordinary. That's like one of the greatest hip songs of all time. That's you know? what I'm saying. It's but like, I loved like, it. I loved it so yo, much. You I wanted to do something you obscure that I know. But I loved it. I wanted to pay homage. It's just like it's like Metallica doing turn the page. You you can't do that song. Like even Metallica. Even Metallica. Yeah. Right. You know, they're like, they can do anything they want. They no, tried they to can't. remake Turn the Page. Right, it didn't work. And, and you just listen to it and you just hear bunk. Right. You yeah, know? Yeah. And it's nothing is more wacker. Right. God rest his soul. Nothing is wacker yeah. than Steve um um uh Cornell. Uh Chris, Chris Cornell. Cornell. Then Chris Cornell's Billy Jean. Oh god. <laughs> what? Yeah, we How dare somebody remake Billy Jean? 
But let me let me re- re- rewind it back. That's a whole other subject. It right. is a whole other subject. All right. So another thing we had in the early days that I find kind of fascinating now is there was rules of the bus. Oh like, God, yeah, that was like you couldn't drink. Now, not I, this I'm not 100 percent clear on because I I never in my life have drunk or smoked weed or anything, but you couldn't drink. On the day of Let's a show. Let's get this man a blunt. <laughs> Listen, you couldn't drink on the day of the show, and you couldn't smoke weed or something, or was until that just after the show? Till after you couldn't the show. do any of those things before the show. Yeah, before the, the show. show. So from the time and you, still you got on the bus, you couldn't on the bus ever. even after the show. Yeah, there was ever. occasions when like you know we'd have like a party or something. Yeah, I don't think. But I, thought, I didn't think there was a no nah, motherfuckers. No nah, motherfuckers be hiding in the base smoking weed all yeah. over the place. Yeah, re- we, but we yeah, weren't yeah, weed on, on days off. Sometimes we yeah. we'd have like a party in the bus, but yeah, it would ne- it was never. Or if like you know we had bitches on the bus or something. When and, bitches were yeah, the then, then, then you then you mind if we you mind if we smoke? Right. Not the rules were quick. <laughs> Those rules were crazy because I, I remember even when we did music videos, like the earlier music videos, mm-hmm. I, I kept getting hit up by directors and shit, and they're like, "Y'all don't fucking smoke weed." Man, or we drink. still still right. do that shit, right? You know, right. The still whole, that whole time, for, you know, from the morning till until Man, load out. Now, you don't know how many no people drinking, drink no in the studio and shit. What's like that? every day they drink in the studio, 40s in the studio. Shit, we we still have that rule, man. No I know, but drinking we, right. before anything you're gonna perform on. Anything. But yeah, and, and I think it was a solid rule. But then you know, like we uh, we had misery. Remember when we, mm-hmm. when misery was turned? They were like, "What the fuck? We can't smoke weed." Right. Like you know, people get yeah, anybody shot that actually smoke weed because anybody, we were so out of that game, dog. Anybody that's on the bus, you have to follow the same rules right. as everybody else's. Mm-hmm. These no, are we the told rules. be real. Hey, you couldn't smoke weed. <laughs> From San Michele, you couldn't smoke weed <laughs> on our bus. Oh, oh man, yeah. we were stupid yeah. for that, man. You got to go outside like, with that shit. How did right? that happen? How did that work out? We were fucking out? real aim for that one. Oh yeah. man. Well, hey, man, you know we didn't know. What, uh, you know what do you guys remember any of the other rules, or was that was no, that no, it? no PDA, hundred percent. Oh, PDA yeah. was out the fucking pu- right. public That's displays. Right. No fetching. public. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I know the funniest shit ever is because like Alex would fly out for like a week at a time every now and then. Alex was our old manager, in case you don't know. And uh, it, I, I remember clear as day, dog. I remember uh, a bunch of us just crewed up. Like that was such a like important rule, you know what I'm saying? Because yeah. we didn't want to look like suckers, right. saps, yeah, yeah. no shit. We were fu- we were fucking hard, you know what I'm saying? Mm. We were fucking, it was our crew, that was it. Oh, nothing softer, <laughs> right. weaker than right. public displays. Right. The whole shit, crew, right. but then one dude on the side. You got like five, you got nine dudes. We're thugs. In leather leather jacket, matching leather jackets, nine right. dudes. We're, right. we're straight thugging. You know and what then one of them is just holding some chick's hand. It's like, what the fuck you I remember this shit so clearly, you know what I'm saying? It's a bunch of, I can't remember, I think it was like Seattle, something, I don't fucking know. But we all crewed up. We sorry. went to this fucking mall, and then <laughs> we turned the corner. We see Alex holding hands with this bitch, breaking the fucking rule like a motherfucker. He, 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 right when he seen us, he goes, "Right, put his hand on his back." <laughs> like we didn't fucking see him. You know what I'm saying? Just kind of like, they didn't see us. Back. Yeah. <laughs> like you don't see my hand at all. Right. 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 Um, there was no passing out drunk in the hotel rooms. But we didn't well, have no problem with hotel. bringing a girl on the road. You can, we bring, like, you you can bring, bring a girl, girl on the road. It's your responsibility no. to get her home. The last, the last yeah, person to fuck the girl say. had to get her home. Yes, the last person to fuck her, that was mm-hmm. it. And right. nobody's allowed to ditch nobody. Yeah, right. you, you, you can't you bring a girl to, right, and just and leave then her, her, her like, yeah, all right, man, you have to get them home. Yeah, minimum, you had to get her a bus ticket home if she could have provided for herself. Like, you could have just leave somebody stranded. We didn't let nothing but you guys walking around the horror stories and shit about the ICP, but you know what I mean? the point I was trying to make is there was, like, I think it was a two- or three-day limit because, like, like people would start, you know, they, uh, a girl that was brought on the bus would start to get played out by everybody else having to deal with her just well, being on the bus. Well, that She was a bus space. hoe or somebody's hoe. I don't remember a limit, Rob. Yeah, there, there was, was a limit. limit. Maybe yeah. the crew bus was a little different than the artist yeah, bus. Yeah, there was a limit. I remember we were a couple girls that were, like, you know, just, it was like a crap game. Cause they'd be yeah. like, a couple <laughs> girls we met were like just, just want, wanted to fuck. Like, I know you guys think it's like we talked them into it or something. No, 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 no. They just wanted to fuck. Mm-hmm. Remember that? Hell yeah. Like, I want to fuck everybody yeah. on there. Like, just letting us know, like, what? Really? Yeah. You know? And they would just be wanting to fuck, right? Mm-hmm. So, um, it was a crap game because whoever last fucked them, 
<laughs> had to get him home. And there's always got the there's always some, you know there always some sucker that they fell in love with a bitch. They fuck oh. always some sucker that fell in love with a bus. <laughs> they, the guy would fuck her, and then he'd be like, "Man, come on, you want to hit that?" She's right in the back, man. She's saying, "Come on, like, go straight. get somebody." Good. And everybody'd be like, "I'm oh, straight, man. I ain't got no money." They'd be like, "Fuck!" <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> be like, "Yeah, that, you gotta get you gotta holler at that bitch, man." man I go. always took care of my girls, you, man. You guys used to call me what you call Captain Sabo. <laughs> like, I don't fucking know. Uh, I was the master. Yeah, he was, I'd take him right to the mall. Yeah, Romeo I remember here. that. Super Romeo, yeah. 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 And buy him underwear, it's everything they need. Like, they have a whole fucking bag of toiletries. Yeah, I give them their own room. Man, girls gotta poop. You know what I'm saying? Right. You know what they're always, you know? You know what they're always, That's what the venue's for. I want them to get the moment to be alone and, and freshen yeah. up, you know? Like, here's yeah. your oh, room. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I'll get them a room. I'll do everything, man. All right, yeah, so, so who's got a so, full... Oh, I'm sorry. So that was like the rules of the road. But yeah. I, I wanted to, I wanted, uh, you know, like the whole story thing, I, I kind of wanted to, to paint a picture first of right. what the road life was yeah. like, kind of like before we get into the actual mm-hmm. story. Man, we're just so insanely driven. Yeah, like... like yeah. Most fans right. don't do that. Right. Man. So so for, for the longest what, time... Are here or what? For the longest time, I was uh, the road manager, you know, road managing uh, the clubs. And so, like... When when you're a road manager, like I never did drugs or drunk or anything like that, so I was like the level-headed one trying to find the drunk ninjas and get them back on the bus the next day and all that, or whatever bus call was. And I just want to talk a little bit about the tactics that I that I was implementing as the road manager. Like when it came time, I'm gonna to try to explain this. When it came time to settle up with a, a promoter, they would have a list of expenses, right? of all the shit that they, they paid for the show. So that would have to be paid out first before you got the, the split of the profits, whatever mm-hmm. the split was, right? Uh, sometimes it was based off a ticket. Sometimes it was a flat fee. But they would always, like, add shit on because they would send you that list ahead of time. Like, this is all the expenses of the show. So you'd have it days ahead of time. But then when you got to settle up with them, they'd be like, oh, we had to add extra security. We had to add this. We had to add that. All this bullshit. And... I was so, like at the time, I was so gangster kind of with it. Beating a promoter's ass is very much a part of hip hop. Right, right. but check it out. Like, like I I was so gangster with it, and I didn't, again, I didn't have any schooling. Right, no formal training. Nobody told me how to do it. Every time they would come me out on that shit, I'd be like, man, what is this fucking bullshit? You trying to hit me up with this bullshit? Did I agree to these extra expenses? So y'all just spending my money. Mm. You're all spending our money. Right. You know what I mean? Without even getting at us. Like we agreed with the first cost, but then you went ahead and spent this other money without even running it by us. So you're spending our money. Which you never even really spent. And and I'm like, I don't give a fuck about all that other bullshit. We're not paying for any of that. You know what I mean? (laughs) I'll be like, look, you better give us our money for this. That the, what I got here, this paperwork right here. That's it. That's that's your cost. You cannot and have a weak ass money. road manager. in my hand. Right, see? put the money in my hand <laughs> right now. See, quick and efficient. But but and there would be like. All right, you know what I mean? Because right. they see like I wasn't giving no, up. Our our our, our crew, know? our crew, like fucking like people that have done road management for our, our crew. Are like all got like notorious stories. I know Dougie's got a story about how he had to fucking take a promoter's car. You know what I'm saying? Took the motherfucker's car. Yeah, it's an endless amount of stories. Uh, right. <laughs> but motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Motherfuckers, because 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 these promoters out here, uh, they fucking so, they're snakes. Like they're cute movies, like janky promoters. That's 100 yeah. percent true. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Right. Very much part of hip hop. Like biggest like, snakes, like wrestling promoters. You know, it's almost promoters. like promoters almost promoters, like 30, 40 percent. Right. Are fucking. I don't know, is Billy out there? Billy's out there, right? Yeah. It's, I, it's like 30, 40% probably are, yeah. are trying to fuck you in some right, way. Yeah, big they, they come up with these make believe numbers mm-hmm. and there's no real way to verify it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then and later so, in life, those snake ass promoters, promoters learn which bands they can fuck and right, which they can't. Can, yeah. right. And the ICP right. ain't fuckable. Right. And then they don't fucking book but We don't have a time, ball. Like every time. I would sit down with these promoters and I'd be like, nah, nah, I don't give a fuck what you're saying. Just give me the money. Like Quit we, that we got noise the numbers. Come out of your face. I pull out I the paperwork. I, I got the numbers right here. I don't give a fuck about your other expenses. That's the money you decided to spend. That's out of your pocket. Just give us this money here and we're good. And and ICP, I feel like ICP was so hot that they were just like, all right, fuck it, you know. <laughs> and they just they, 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 they were bold with, every time. Yeah. Now here's another tactic. That I would pull as a as a road manager, uh, and this one this one I fucking love. So uh, every night 
they take a percentage of your merch, okay? So what I feel is fair, like 20% at the highest. That's like the high, right? Yeah, we would always right try there, to negotiate right? like 10%, mm-hmm. yeah, 20 15%. Same, right? That was common. The snakes would go for 20 but then you have these clubs, 30 <laughs> yeah. 35%. They would take 35% nice of your merch. The mad nice ones. So we would come rolling up into these fucking venues. And I would look at my paperwork, and I'd be like, "Oh shit!" Like I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't set this stuff up, right? It was Alex and the, and the, you know, the tour, the, whatever the uh, touring agent, the yeah. touring agent. So I would look at the paperwork. I'd be like, "Oh shit, thirty <laughs> percent." You know what I mean? I'd be like, "Fuck that!" So we come rolling to the club. I'd be like, "I'd be like, look, man, this thirty percent ain't working." You know, like we, we you know, this is what we survive it's off. It's all been agreed upon beforehand. It doesn't matter. I'd be like, "This is what we survive off our merch," you know, and sometimes. They'd be like, ah, all right, well, what do, you, what do you think is fair? And I'd be like, man, the most we're going to pay is 20%. You know, and sometimes it'd be like 35, 30, you know, whatever. But I'd always beat them up, you know. Mm-hmm. And if we're they were asking, up outside, motherfuckers. If they were asking for 20, I was getting 10. You know what I'm yeah. saying? The same thing. And a lot of times they just agree to it. All right, fuck it. You know what I mean? And, you know, and so that, but sometimes they wouldn't. They'd be That's because like, they didn't understand the power of our merch. They were like, they were like, oh, it'd be in some corporate, like it'd be a, an right. arena or something. And they would be all corporate, and they're like, no, that's just how we do it. 35% is the standard. And then I'd be like, I would come in, and, and, and I would talk to you guys, and I'd be like, man, it's these time guys. time to hustle these motherfuckers. Yeah, these guys are being, time to fuck these them. guys are being whack. Yeah. Do you agree we don't sell if right. they don't fucking drop the price? And, you, and, and we talk about it for a second? Yeah, okay, straight. So then I'd go back to them, and I'd be like, all right, we're not selling. You man, know what I mean? Ever said no to that? I know. You know what I mean? Man, and then no, they would be like, the show, man. they would be like, they'd be like, oh shit, you're not selling? And they'd be like, no, you know, like for real. And I'm like, no, we're not selling. If you guys don't drop that price to 20, percent that's the most we're paying. Fuck it, we're not selling. So then they'd be like, all right, and they'd walk away. And then I'd tell our guys tear the fucking merch mm-hmm. booth down. So they start tearing the merch booth down. I guarantee you, fucking. Every time they'd come back, all right, yeah, all right, twenty percent. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's just because that fucking, fucking wall. Of merch. I mean, they'd see the wall of merch and it's all coming down. Right, we're yeah. like, fuck y'all. And then we're like, well, if we need to. We still out in the parking lot. Right, exactly. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, if we really need to, they're not gonna shit, fucking. Right. You know, they're not gonna drop it down. Start slagging instead of. Slagging. But it was like strong arm in the motherfuckers. You know what I mean? And, and that's Good, what it man. was. That's what they're doing to you. Right. Exactly. So, uh, and then, and then when I was road managing back then, it was crazy because. I would come in, I, we would have one guy, usually like one or two guys selling merch, and I would jump back behind the table to help them sell merch, right? Uh, first, I'd talk to the promoter, get all that situated, get all the loaders in, go to the merch table, jump behind there, start selling merch all the way up until the show. Then I would jump on stage and be a monster, you know what I mean? Then I would settle up real quick, then I would jump behind the merch booth and keep selling, you know what I mean? Right, so right. I was going like fucking the whole day, and I remember the Cottonmouth Kings, when they finally realized I was the monster on stage, they were like, they came up to me and they're like, what the fuck, man? You, I mean, you're fucking selling merch. They ran it. I didn't even think about it. They were like, you're fucking selling merch. It's, you're selling it's because, up. Because you're a monster. Because our fucking hustle was so You're helping immaculate. load in. You know what I'm saying? You know, you're everybody, helping load in. Everybody's like, hustle was so on fucking point, Yeah, it man. was like, we were just going, like, right. 100% all the time. Mm-hmm. Just going, going, yeah, going. Yeah, it's true. I you, you know, the thing is, man, when, when, when you talk about the old days like that, you talk about today... Like, what's different, right? What's different? I mean, we still yeah. tour every year right. just yeah, the same yeah. amount, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. But uh, what is different is it feels more like an organized yeah. chaos now. Yeah, it's it's because we got such a handle on what we're Everybody doing. Everybody knows what's going to happen right. when ICP comes to town. They know exactly mm-hmm. what's going to happen. So they got the barricade. Right. They got the proper amount. Mm-hmm. But there was a gr- long period of time when people... Underestimated or didn't know. Oh, you're right. Dis- those are the right, more dis- chaotic shows. Right, you know? where it's oblivious. Uh, like when the fans could get up on stage and craziness and and you know madness. Those were the more days that um that it was more unorganized chaotic. Yeah, yeah. You know, but now it's and still also, chaotic. Right, yeah. Our shows are still wild, and, but and, it's like a safe. It's well, like an organized. Yeah, chaotic yeah. Like the, the 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 organized chaos, the organized aspect of it, and. And cell phone cameras are what fucking ceased on the ass beating so much yeah, <laughs> yeah. shows too. Because man, we used to scrap. We want to take a commercial. Yeah, well, hold on. I okay. want to. I want to mention two other things. Uh, and th- and a lot of this I wanted to mention for ninjas ninjas chilling watching this. They're they're you know starting out in the in the, in the game in the, in the music industry. Uh, other tactics we would pull 
every fucking venue you go to, everybody wants free merch. They act like you're not paying out of pocket. Yeah, of course. Like all the fucking right. stage oh, hands, shirt. promoters, fucking club owners. I don't give a security. They're all, hey, man, you can, can I get a shirt? I mean, I've been asked that a million times. You know okay. what I mean? And so, you know, all that shit costs money. So I, we, we came up with, oh, you got to talk to Ross Baker. You know what I mean? You gotta, yeah, you gotta talk to Ross Baker, man. He's the he's the one that makes the call. So then they would go around yeah, asking everybody Ross who Ross, Ross for Ross Baker. Ross Baker don't exist. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's not a real person. It sounds real. Like, like, sounds real. You're yeah. never gonna I'm find for Ross, man. You're never gonna find Ross Baker, you know. And so, but everybody <laughs> hears that they're like, oh yeah, Ross Baker. I just seen him. Like he was right. over there. You know what I mean? Ross told me to come talk to you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Baker. So that was our tactic to just, you know, to sidestep that bone. Uh, the other thing is when you're selling merch, they count in, right? So that they count in all the merchandise that you brought in the to club. To try to keep it from hustling. Right. And so they know the exact counts. And then when you start selling at the end of the night, they count everything out. And whatever's, whatever's, you know, then, then they can determine how much you, you sold. I see it together. Right. <laughs> right. So, so what we used to do is bring in extra merch. Okay. You know what I mean? In between the yeah, show. So like you 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 would sneak yeah, it so, in. So the yeah. right. So the, their so, their count would still be fucking high shit, shit. even though you sold massive. Like, like exactly. let's say right. let's say you started with hundred shirts, right? And you actually sold like like fifty, you'd bring in an extra like forty. And right. it looked like you so sold, them, you 10. sold 10. Yeah. You only right. sold 10, you know what I mean? So we'd be constantly... So all you up-and-comers out there, <laughs> right. you know what I'm saying? Because that, hey, on the road still, yeah. man, the merch game is still like yeah, 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 that yeah. motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? So you see, you see like That's sellers, a lot of fucking artists sellers coming survive. in with backpacks full of shit. We'd have Fago, uh, Fago fucking <laughs> cardboard boxes. Oh, this is just right, Fago, you know. You know? Full it's of fucking all fucking shirts. full of merch and shit, and we'd right. be constantly like, like our sellers were all hip to this. You know, yeah. we'd constantly be doing it just to keep the money down. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. So. So anyway, uh, but anyway, when we get back. We're, we're gonna well, talk before we got, yeah. before we go to the break, right quick, man. Rob, they've been hitting me up on Facebook. They've been in my DMs about this fly ass gear we be wearing. Where can they get it at, man? Oh shit, you can get it uh, at uh, Psychopathic Vault. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And then um, on, uh, on, uh, I'm not sure which ones are, are for sale now, or which ones are gonna be for Black Friday. But I know on Black Friday we're having a huge blowout for like all the fucking jerseys that we've been rocking and all that shit. Nice. Psychopathic Vault. That's what's up. All right, so yeah, when we come back, I want to talk more about it. Uh, wh what our tactics used to be for bootleggers, how we used to handle bootleggers. Yeah, oh, up there. Man. Uh, yeah I'll get into like one quick, well, it'll probably be a long story because everybody's going to jump in on it. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Oh, just, yeah. to, just to try to like kind of kind of cover the whole thing about fighting. All right, so we're going to go to a, yeah. a com commercial break, but we, uh, we got we got crazy more to talk about hell when yeah. we come back. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. All right, hell yeah. All right. So we're back and uh, we're gonna continue on trying to trying to leave off uh, trying to trying to uh, start off where we left off. All right, w one of the things that uh, one of the things also I remember uh, is in Denver. I don't remember the name of the club, but we were playing a club down there, and I remember their their cut, you know, was like kind of high. It was like a twenty percent range or something like there that. There was like two. There was like a, I think it was. Fillmore and Odeon was like. The I think two it was the I, Odeon. The one I, they, they were like the two on Colfax. I think. Yeah, I think it was the Odeon. But uh, but I remember, man, I was I was so gangster back then, like, like just always looking out for getting getting our money first oh, yeah, and foremost, sure. you know. And um, I remember they uh, you know, I settled up with these guys, and usually what they do is they get the merch cut first. Mm -hmm. They always do that. They get the merch yep. cut. And then they settle up with you, and then you get your money from right. the from the you know from yeah. the show. This one time, this guy so had the time to pay you out of that merch. Yeah. Cut. yeah. So what they did was they um, they settled up uh, with the with the uh, the venue cut with me first, and we signed off all the paperwork, but they didn't get any of the merch money yet, right? Yeah. So you know they get the percentage, right? And I was like, oh, you're straight. That's it then? He was like, yeah, that's it. And I was like, okay. Oh, they forgot. They forgot. Wow. So I went out to the bus. <laughs> I just kept all the money, you know yeah. what I mean? 
And then they were like looking for me later. They kept knocking on the door on the bus. I uh, told the bus driver, "I'm not. I'm not here." <laughs> See, that was the fuck out of town. <laughs> they, I mean, that they might just sound like you know that that was fucking thousands of thousands mean, upon thousands upon yeah. thousands of dollars, man. You know what I mean? Like, like yeah. we would do like. Man, sometimes it's like 50 G's for one show. Right, yeah. Like wow. more sometimes. Like, you know what I'm saying? And merch, you yeah. know, because like there would be a sea of ninjas all buying merch as fast as they could, like as fast as you could sell it. You now, know what I mean? Now, how much merch were we talking about? We were talking offline, you know, during the commercial break. Like a lot of these, you know, ninjas that just getting on, they don't understand. They've seen the merch tables recently and stuff like that, but. How much merch are we talking about? And like, oh, it was it was, it was like like I, ICP has always had the the biggest fucking merch display, like like as far mm-hmm. as bands go, the most impressive, the most massive merch yeah, display. Most bands are like happy like, with like two shirts, yeah, and, two, yeah, yeah. and like two two like just normal shirts and like a girl yeah. shirt, you know. It's it like, would uh, be like two hundred items and shit yeah. on the oh, walls, wow. you know. What I mean? like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I mean, so it was off the chain and. Uh, the other thing we had to wor- worry about were bootleggers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, bootleggers used to get it, man. Yeah. So, like, basically, you know, I came up with a tactic how to handle bootleggers because you, you'd hear about it. Oh, man, they're selling your shirt outside for 10 bucks. You know what I mean? Shit. And you're well, like, you know, what the fuck? They're fucking bootleggers. Yeah, man. they're, they're out there bootlegging. They're selling this shit. So, uh, when we went on tour, all right, let me, let me explain this, too. When we went on tour, it'd be like a couple semi-trucks. Uh, two tour buses, and we usually have two to three vans wrapped, and the vans would be ahead of the the tour promoting the show. Okay. You know, before we even got to the city, then the tour buses and everything would come rolling in. We'd all kind of connect together. One guy, uh, I remember, uh, one writer described our tour as like Star Wars. Like, oh, like, yeah. like, 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 our, our buses are like Death Star, or, or not Death Stars, but Star Destroyers. Uh, Star Destroyers. Yeah. And the vans the are TIE like the fighters. TIE Fighters <laughs> circling. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? Because we had like a fleet coming into yeah, town. You yeah. know what I mean? Uh, but anyway, so these vans would be there at the show, right? And, um, you know, and, and basically they're with us at the show. So what, what I would do is I would, ro- ro- you know, uh, basically get our crew together usually like eight ninjas, let's say. we jump in the van, we would roll out, and basically, you know, just circle the venue looking for the bootleggers, and they'd always be on the street corner or whatever. We'd roll up on them slow, everybody would jump out, and we'd just circle them, you mm-hmm. know? And then I would say, yo, you know, I'd be like, <clears throat> I'm gonna try to do my intimidation voice. <laughs> yo, my man, my man, yo! You know, they'd be like, oh shit, what? And I'd be like, you got two fucking choices right now. Either give up that fucking bag with all your shit in it or get your ass beat. What's it going to be? The choice you know? is yours. The choice is yours. <laughs> What's it going to be? And we're still going to take the bag after you get your ass beat anyhow. Right, and they would look around and be like, oh shit, they'd be surrounded by eight ninjas and they would yeah. give up, they'd give up the bag every time. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, can I get my uh, bag back? Can you just, no. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and so we would hit up all the fucking bootleggers. Everyone we found, same thing. Circle. Boom, give up your shit, take their shit. And then we'd have like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of these bootleg shirts. Yeah. Now when anybody's asking for fucking free merch, that's when we give you all these yeah, shitty yeah, ass go. bootleg shirts. Here you go. Yeah, you know there I mean? you go. That yeah. was another tactic. Like when we felt generous and wanted to give out some shirts, we'd give out the bootleg <laughs> shirts. Yeah. <laughs> so, so anyway, that, that was our tactic. And never once did we have any well, no, we had uh, you guys went to jail a couple we times. We went to jail shirt. once for it, but like most of the time, no problems, you know. Because if you, uh, this is getting into some legalese shit, but if if, if you want to get permission to stop bootleggers, yeah, it's a big process. It's a man. big process. You get those affidavits and you all have that to shit, sign man. all this paperwork, get a lawyer to make it official in each city that you're wow. in before so, you get there. They got yeah. them all cleared out and all that shit. Yeah, and That's you got to be able to present it to the police when you're down there. It's just a whole pain in the ass, mad money, mad time, and it's not worth it. We just used our gangster tactic. Yeah. Of like threatening the motherfucker, right. like you know what I mean. It's, it's, it's a lot easier. It's quick and efficient, yeah, and you right get a be- fucking there. and you get, get a free benefit. Shirts, right. You get free shirts. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, bag for them. Yeah. So anyway, uh, now but, this was before cell phones. This was before yeah, recording, oh yeah, before, recording yeah, videos, before recording stuff, shit. Right. Yeah. Know. There you go. Mm, yeah. You still get, get, get away with a lot of shit back then. Right. Before <laughs> motherfuckers were doing like this kind of shit. You know what I'm saying? All right. I want to get into something right fast. Oh yeah. Good. 
and I'm, I'm just gonna, just one of my fucking shits is about this, and I know both of you two were like heavily involved in this, so I'm sure like, um, oh, here, throw me the, throw me the sheik. Uh, I need it for this guy, because I know he's gonna end up coming in, but you guys are gonna have Ooh. to wait. Oh, I, I'm a <laughs> fucking ninja guy. Right. Ampidextrous. I seen that. Anyhow, um, uh, we're in San, it, it, this is my only, like, this is the only fighting story I got on my list, you know what I'm saying? Because fighting stories alone could, fucking fill up a week's worth of these podcasts. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, fighting stories and groupie stories. Forget about it. You know what I'm saying? We could be here That's for... That's all I got. Like we could be there for That's months. That's all I got. <laughs> Quit dissing those. It's, I'm not dissing. I said, I'm just... No, I'm not dissing them at all. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I think that they're part of our... Shit, I'm just saying, yeah. you know, I only got one of them stories because I know we could be here forever yeah. and that's what we're telling. You know what I'm saying? But I'm not... Shit, that's, that's some of the best stories. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. But, um... And I'm sure you probably have this one on your list too, Joe. But, uh... uh San Francisco. We did a show in San Francisco, and afterwards, you know, back. Oh, the rugby. Yeah, I don't know what the fuck. Yeah, see, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Everybody's gonna have like a little bit of different take on it. You know what I'm saying? Because plus, it was like forever ago. You know what I'm saying? But I wasn't involved as you guys were, so I'm I'm just gonna tell mine right quick, and then you guys can hash it out. What what happened on your guys' end? But um, but uh, we all remember this one really good because it was fucking amazing. (laughs) You know what I'm saying? It truly was, dog. It was fucking. I think we were beating up a super villain or something. You know what I'm saying? It was crazy, dog. Right, right. So anyhow, so we, we, we played we played San Francisco. Don't remember where. Don't remember what year. It was way back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it must have been like maybe like 98 or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I think uh, fucking, I think Twister were on the bus. Uh, and, uh, fucking Misery, misery for sure yeah. was because he was a big player in it. Yeah. Uh, and then our just normal crew, you know what I'm saying? And then all of us. Yeah. And uh, <clears throat> so... Uh, we had we had early bus call a lot back then because we had like long drives. Like nowadays, we had to like stay in the city till like five, six in the morning, you know, and just drive for a few hours, whatever. But uh, so we, we pretty much always leave right after the fucking shows. You know, if we were in town, it'd be for a couple hours tops. You know, just where they're breaking down, you know, loading out and all that shit. Then we'd head out, and uh, so we'd always like first thing we do, everybody be hungry as shit, so we'd look for somewhere to eat. You know what I'm saying? So um. I, everything was like fucking closed around where we were at and everybody was starving so we wanted to get something to eat before we got on the freeway and had to drive out two hours to find a truck stop and shit you know what I'm saying so somehow our driver found this little fucking diner restaurant it wasn't a diner but it was like a little like it was like a hipster restaurant almost or something you know what I'm saying and it was in the middle of a fucking neighborhood in the middle of the fucking hills of San Francisco like our bus couldn't make the turns you had to like turn like ten times and turn on the street and all that shit <laughs> So we parked pretty much like right in front of the place, maybe down a few buildings, but we were like right in front of the fucking spot, a big ass hill, all that shit, you know what I'm saying? So we all, it's like, it's like us and like four other people in there, you know what I'm saying? And then the waitresses and all that, you know, eating. And our crew was just fucking massive, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere we rolled, our crew, when we went into like fucking Denny's at night, whatever the fuck, it seriously takes us like three hours just to get our food, because our crew... At least, at least like 20 people. At least, you, you know what I'm saying? saying? At least, because we usually had two buses, and they were full to the max plus right. people, you know what I'm saying? So it was and at not, least... Not everybody would come in, but right. there'd be like... There'd, there'd be at 20. least like 15 people yeah. and eating, <laughs> you, know you know what I'm saying, saying? at any given time, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. So, you know, a bunch of big dudes, too. We ain't like a little-ass yeah. crew, you know? And motherfuckers, yeah. you just look at us, you know, you're like, those motherfuckers probably fight, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. That's you the thing, man, like... Everywhere we go, people are always like, damn, you guys are big. Now, right. I don't mean big, like muscular. Right. We're all tall. Big. Like, yeah, they're like, like, I didn't think you guys would be so tall. I you remember when we went to Denver one day, yeah. and we were all in like some club, dance club, and, mm-hmm. and I'm sorry, I just was. <laughs> You said you didn't mind. No, come on. No, after all, no, come on. Hurry up. Anyway, we were standing in a club, you know what I'm saying? The so t- t- with some girls, way right? off on a tangent. With right. some girls, right? And the girls were like, it's, oh, my story is, the girls were like, man, you guys are so fucking tall. You guys are like towering over everybody. I was looking for, for you guys. When I came out of the bathroom, you could just see you guys above everybody. And I started looking around. We are like a foot taller well, than anybody. We, we, get this, we, get this, we still get this, constantly get this. People think we're a basketball team. You know what I'm saying? Like in hotels, <laughs> right, you're in the elevator. Yeah, you're yeah. Plus, you know, I'm something? built like a, like a athletic yeah, basketball tall, player. Skinny, yeah, tall, skinny, yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's right. You know, I can just it's same body. <laughs> so anyhow, so we're, we're all fucking eating. And um, like I said, I, I know as soon as I'm finished, and you guys are probably going to fill in the gaps or whatever the fuck, but... Uh, but uh, um. There was a dude and this bitch in there eating, you know what I'm saying? And uh, the dude was just being really fucking belligerent, belligerent. you know what I'm saying? Oh, to the waitress, he's being a dickhead to the waitress, you know what I'm saying? Like, they almost making her cry and shit, you know what I'm saying? He was just being a fucking asshole. And his bitch was, like, clearly fucking distressed over it, you know what I'm saying? She's, like, all embarrassed, didn't even look up, you know? He's like, oh, whatever, oh, she don't give a fuck. Hey, fuck you, bring you know? Just a total dick wipe, you know what I'm saying? And then, uh, so he wasn't saying shit at us at first, you know what I'm saying? But I don't think he noticed us. Like, my, my speculation is he was fucking coked out of his mind. 
Because anytime oh, I got into yeah. a fight with a cokehead, they're really hard to fucking keep down when you beat yeah, them up. You know what I'm saying? They always want to pop back up. Always want to pop back up. You know, no, you mangled, pop back up. <laughs> but, but you know what I'm talking about. But yeah. fucking, um, so anyhow, fucking, he started fucking like, like fucking with us. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't remember oh, the exact shit. details, but he started fucking around. You know what I'm saying? So we were like, all right, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Let's go ahead and handle it. So we we're like, yo, what's up then, homie? You know what I'm saying? He's like, fuck all you. I'll take all of you motherfuckers. We're just oh, like, wow. Oh. It's, you know what's interesting? Uh, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Then, I'm sure I'm probably off. Awesome. I'm sure you blanks? remember a different. Yeah, for, but yeah. Just, let me hear it. Because okay. it'll be quick. Because I know that it's going right. to take a fucking half hour after I'm done with it. Sure, whatever yeah. Whatever he's adding in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. This is just my take on it right quick. I know. You know I got saying? you. Because yep. I'm sure you've already fucking found <laughs> 10 holes in my shit. <laughs> no, no, no. You know no I, so no, anyhow, you're long story short, it's going to get filled in. You know what I'm saying? So long story short, we end up going the fuck outside. Like, yo, what's up? And he comes the fuck outside. We're just like, oh, I can't fucking believe it. Right there, he's insane. I mean, we're fucking crazy deep. 15 deep at least. And none none of us fucking friendly. And we're, right, and we're all thugged out. You know what I'm saying? Everybody's tall we're as shit. We're all hangry. <laughs> right. And, and we didn't fucking eat, I don't think. You know what I'm saying? And then fucking, who knows how many fucking other people got in the bus. He didn't fucking know. You know what I'm saying? There's two yeah. buses out there. And then fucking, um, where are you just talking about shit? And I, I, I think like Rob and Nene and Joe are at the forefront of it, but... He just yeah. started getting fucking molly whopped, you know, but kept popping back up. Yeah. And then fucking, I just remember my part of it. I just, dog, he got swarmed on by every member of the fucking buses. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so much so that you'd be punching your fucking homies in the arms and shit trying to punch them. Like, <laughs> right. oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> and I've got like a four or five really good fucking kicks on his wrist. Like his shirt was gone. It was ripped off like that. It, was, it like blew off of him. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Just fucking, his clothes just disappeared. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they got blue off it from punch, from getting punched. From and, punches. and I just remember one of the times he just kept getting back up. And I was kicking him so fucking hard. It sounded like firecrackers popping off. Damn. And everybody's beating the shit out of him. He'd get up and he'd try to run a couple times and he fucking would smack the fucking uh, parking meters. Like, right, boom! Just yeah. fucking. And then people would just grab him, <laughs> bouncing his head off everything. <laughs> then some, I remember Nene, and then Nene fucking busts yeah. out the box cutter. Yeah. We're yeah, like, yeah. yo, what the fuck? Right. We don't need to kill him, or he's already getting right. fucked up. We don't need yeah, to stab yeah. him and yeah. all this confusion, you know? <laughs> but then, whatever. So they fuck, I can't remember, somebody like police or some oh, shit like man. that. And then somehow, we fucking destroyed this guy. And then when we pulled off, he was still on the fucking front of the place talking shit. As right. we were pulling off, you know, the fucking underwear all hanging out, no fucking shirt on, face all fucked like the up. Elephant man, you know what I'm saying? Just fucking lumped up, and then all the fucking waitresses gave us a round of fucking they standing vision. Oh, straight right. up, twelve guys beating one ninja right. down, and they all gave us the look, right? Because he and was somehow, hanging with us, right? And somehow he was hanging with all twelve of us, right? And somehow, somehow, fucking, we got away before the oh, police yeah. came in yeah. the buses because right. we were like, yo. A bunch of us are going to jail. My think, knuckle was broke. It's yeah. still gone. <laughs> yeah, right yeah, a bunch of my the, missing. The, uh, one, two, three. Right, so third knuckle is gone. So you that, can that see was, that bone. From that fight. Yeah. From that guy's head. Yeah. And I, and uh, I, 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 that right, I, I said this. Story. Now, you got to understand, like, fucking fights were such a constant thing. I swear to God, that's why my knuckle bones I would say just about every night, there was at least one scrap. If not, like, fucking somebody jumping on stage and us beating them on stage... Something happening backstage or in the crowd. Somebody, somebody getting their head cracked by somebody yeah. in our crew. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, I remember sure. Dougie used to always have like clown paint marks on his fist from punching people. Right. Like perfect marks when the paint was like, right. like the white to black. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. And if like, we just scrap, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And, uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's uh, lawsuits and fucking cell phones and shit, you know, yeah. definitely calm that shit the fuck can, out. Can I? And plus, don't nobody wild like they used to. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, here, here goes the Sheik. I'm just going to let Manny hold it because he's in between you guys. So oh, I know let, you two are about let, to let me get, let me get, get the fucking... So I just, I'm just saying... All right. I'm just saying that, that I wanted to bring that up because we used to fight a lot, and that fight really stood out because this guy was like a fucking... Yeah. He was like some kind of sleeper cell with fucking some kind of weird <laughs> injection in him. You know what I'm saying? Straight the fuck he up. Was. He was like some kind of like Russian soldier or something. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. I don't know what the fuck. He, he had like some gamma rays in him or some yeah. shit. You know what I'm saying? Something. But but the the, the thing is, because I I wanted to bring that up too, because I knew you guys were also gonna yeah, jump right. on this story and fucking get oh, even yeah. more into it. So have at it. All right, all right. So it, what's funny is uh, when you remember back. I mean, what what do you what do you think that was like twenty at least twenty years? That ago? That had been like in like fucking like probably like ninety seven or eight. Yeah. Because so, both twisted and misery on the road. Right. right. So you're talking about like twenty three odd years ago. Right. How how, how people remember things? Yeah. It changes right? like a motherfucker. But no, right. all your all your stuff is accurate, yeah. right? 
But you, I'm just talking about a lot of but details. But I remember a yeah. lot more. Right. I, I remember like, more details. I wasn't right in the forefront. I was just one of the yeah. motherfuckers kicking the bitch. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, I wasn't at the front. I was like at the fucking second wave. Now, maybe, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe Joe can verify this part of the story. But I was actually sitting on the end of the table, kind of close to where him and his girl were sitting. I think it was yeah. him and his wife. And they didn't start out belligerent. They were talking with, I believe, Joe and a couple other ninjas. And the dude was kind of spacey, and yeah. he was calm. He wasn't loud or anything, but he was talking about how he likes for people to fuck his wife. Oh, you know what do you call and, that? A cuckold? Yeah, he, he was cuckold? trying to. I just learned that he cuckold. was trying cuckold? to convince some of the you know the guys at that end of the table. Hey, would you like to come home and and, and fuck my wife? And okay, I'll, yeah, she, she was hot. hot. I don't and remember none hot. of that, but I'm sure. I'm sure you she remember, was right, Joe? Hot. Yeah, you yeah remember, I, I remember. She, cause I he, was like, <laughs> he was like an athletic stud. He had a hot ass bitch. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I was like sitting there, like listening to this. I was like, "What is he talking about?" Because I kept hearing a little bit of it. <laughs> Come on, fuck my I'm wife, like, guys. Fuck guy, her. I know, seriously. I know, yeah, that's how they get. And I Can remember I water, Rudy? Joe. Joe was really interested in this concept. And I was like, "I'm about to go get that." I was thinking, I was like, "Dude was like, yeah, but I'll be in the closet video." <laughs> right. But Joe Joe seemed really interested in it. And, th- and that's what I was thinking. Is Joe seriously considering this? Like, you know what I mean? Like, like, I was trying to get, I was trying to hold the bus up for the night. I was trying to get topped off behind the fucking <laughs> dumpster, you know what I'm saying? Right, with the dude watching though? No, fuck no. That's a deal breaker. <laughs> sorry, right. That's always been my deal breaker. Fuck no, man. A dude watching? That'd be like the proper <laughs> it's like thing. It's right? like a form of fucking. <laughs> the boyfriend got to watch. Right? A dude that's watching is like a form of fucking. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Okay. Like he's enjoying sex with you. Like, I don't understand he people. So because he's getting off watching you. I don't understand right. people when they're like, man, me and my girl. And it's half you motherfuckers out there, right? Because everybody I know, every guy I know, me and my boy fuck the shit out of this oh, girl, yeah, man. Oh, yeah, yeah, know that. Together? None of that. None of that. You, yeah, 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 man. Hell yeah. Hey, it was shit. I probably on the record have never done that ever in me my ne- life. Me neither. Of course. Ever. Me neither. But they're like, yeah, me and my boy, man, we fucked this girl for an hour. You know, at the same time, okay, you could have each fucked her on your own. But you choose oh, yeah, that's the addition of your boy to make it more as a erotic. benefit. Hold on. As a benefit. <laughs> to <laughs> make it yeah, more yeah. freaky. So, what you're telling me is you and this girl were about to fuck, and the addition of your homeboy in the mix made it more freaky. <laughs> the addition of a man. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that means I'm, I have nothing at all. Fuck you for even thinking it. I have nothing at, at all against gay people. Only people who deny it, yeah, the, obviously the, the addition the of a man it's makes you dick even harder. Yeah. That's why you have 10% gayness in you, which is fine. <laughs> just, just, own just own it. Just own it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, so anyway. Or say you're 10% in the closet and let people speculate. You know what I'm saying? But you know you're 10% something if his ass yeah. makes you horny. So so anyway, the uh, the dude was talking about all that and the, and the table conversation turned to that. Like, this motherfucker's crazy down here. Right. Talking about, like, he's talking to everybody at that end of the table. But you got to remember, we're like 20 people right. around we're this table. We're kind of spreading around. Yeah, right. It's just so odd. And not right? everybody's paying attention what the fuck yeah. is going so on So then there. the guy gets up and I, and I started talking to him. I he said, touched you. Yeah, I started talking to him. I was like, I was like, hell, hold on, man. So you're gonna let one somebody go home with you and, and and fuck your wife, you know? And he's like, yeah. So then he got up and came over, and he like put like from behind. You don't I do know, this if you know. Rob. I don't know. I don't, don't know. Do he was, don't anybody. do this. Yeah. So he, I was sitting down. He's standing up. He just put his hands on my shoulders. You mm-hmm. don't touch like that. Rob, man. I'm like that with my neck, dog. Yeah. So he puts her hand on my neck. You know what sucks about Rob, though? Yeah. You can uh. be his own brother and you don't touch <laughs> Rob. Do right. That's yeah. what sucks. Uh, I, know, I, know, I know you don't goose Rob and you don't slap his ass. You don't goose him. There's nothing funny about that. No. You don't smack his ass. Nothing funny. There's two people you don't goose or slap their ass. Rob and Billy. You just don't goose There's nothing funny about it. What's where's the punchline? Yeah. It's getting really fucking mad. <laughs> All right, so anyway, when he put his hands on me like that, I fucking jumped up, and I turned around, and I grabbed him, and I threw him against the wall. And I was like, don't you have... You know, I started screaming at him because mm. I went in berserker mode. I was like, don't you ever fucking put your hands on me, you motherfucker, you know? He did and the then, same thing to me when I tried to right. pat him on the back for a good, good job. job. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, my phone's going off. But anyway, uh, sorry, it's him. Sorry. It's the guy. It's the guy. It's the guy he, calling. He, he's calling. Look, now that it's all said and done, <laughs> you guys want to come fuck my wife? Somehow, somehow Rob's got a land, landline in his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he's got like a fucking rotary phone in his pocket. Look at this. Look at this rotary phone. Tell a rope story, man. Come on, anyway, so, this guy's so, fucking one of our fucking main guys. It's so bad with a flip phone. That's right, man. Flip phone to the fullest. Please don't show people that. Yeah, I die. You, you think it's awesome. It's pretty embarrassing for I love, us. I love it. I love it. Uh, anyway, he's still waiting for somebody to chirp him. <laughs> so, he calls everybody else's phone smartphones, too. There you go. Oh, he's got, got an unsmartphone. Rob <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. got that dumb phone. We got the. <laughs> All right, so anyway, I threw the guy up against the wall and I was like, you know, screaming at him. And then I let him go. That's when he started getting belligerent. Yeah. Because he went, sat down at the table and he was like, he kept, he was all salty now. Go. He was all salty, so he was getting loud <laughs> and fucking being rude to the waitresses. And then, you know, God bless his girlfriend. You know, she was doing everything she could. Yeah, she, she was trying to calm him down. She was trying to calm his ass. She was doing everything. We were, even, the point where we were apologizing to her right? when we were beating his ass. I remember that. So anyway, we all got up. Sorry, we had to do this. We all got up. We were like, let's get out of here. So we all got up. You know, we paid for our food. And we That's walked right. and then out. He came out he talking. Came we out. were all the way That's at right. the bus. Yeah. We were all the way at the bus. Everybody You're walking in the bus. That's right. Yeah, everybody you know, was we wouldn't there. even remember that yeah. night anymore. You realize no, that. I know. If this didn't happen. Right. right. There so, would be nothing to Nothing, right. nothing right. Right. Anyway, we were all getting back on the bus. The last two to get on the bus was me and Misery. And all of a sudden, dude comes out the club and he's he's fucking club, the restaurant. Uh, I mean in the restaurant. Sandwich, please. Uh he comes out the restaurant. So we go walking back up there. And we kind of like got a thing, and he was like, I'll fight any one of you. Dude. You were like, ah, oh, he's talking shit, y'all. We yeah. piled right so back anyway, <laughs> We got it out there. We surrounded the the bottom. It was like a flight of stairs from the restaurant coming down. We surrounded the fucking stairs. Yeah, you know, a big ass. And dude. we're listening to him, and he's like, he's like, I'll fight any one of you. Y'all fucking gonna yell at me and shit in front of my wife. Do, do, do. And I told him, I said, I said, man, I was trying to give him an escape. I was right. like, I was like, hey, man. That's respect. You know, you came out here to defend your honor. We get it. Now right. just go back and because, because he was gonna go die. Right yeah, well, that's you know what, what I was thinking. Like, when when when, when he, he, that many people up right. against one dude, it's not even yeah. fun. Right. You, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? Oh, yeah. yeah. So I, I said, I told him, I said, you defended your honor, you came out here, mad respect for that. Now you're good, man. Just go back in, we're gonna right. get back in the bus. You didn't lose any face. We got it. It's just, you know, you don't fucking touch me. Right. I don't know you, you know? So he was like, his wife managed to get him back in the restaurant. Yeah. We went back to the fucking bus again. It was me and, and, and Misery, the last ones getting on the bus. All of a sudden, he comes out fucking yelling, <laughs> right? Oh, like, right. he thinks we're running. He, like, worked, he worked himself you know, up when he went back. Yeah, and you know what I'm saying? Them. Fuck them. And, and I said, oh, fuck. And I think I handed... My bag, I had a bag with my computer in it and all this shit. I handed it to like Tom Dub or somebody, and I just ran at him. You know, and I saw I saw Nene pull out his fucking knife, yeah, the box, box cutter, cutter yeah. and I just ran at the motherfucker. And he, when he seen me coming, it wasn't just me. Everybody piled out of the bus, so there yeah, was like was a, a whole yeah. street of ninjas. See, running I was out. I was in that second wave, right? I but I was I was first, yeah. and he turned to run. And, you know, when he seen us all coming, he was like, I just see, saw the fear on his face. And it wasn't just me. It was like he was seeing a whole street right, yeah, running yeah, yeah. at him. So he turned to run, and I grabbed him by his shirt, and I fucking threw him right into, like, a, a signpost. You yeah. know, one of the signposts, like, do not park or right, whatever. Yeah. And I fucking threw him into that shit, and he hit it right in his clavicle. I just yeah. seen him, like, he hit that and, like, spun around the fucking sign hey, and man, landed on the ground. Let me interject. Okay. This dude, bro. Yeah, I'll never forget. That was the, the that was the kicker to the whole fight. Yeah, no, and he then was he, unstoppable. He kept yeah. getting up though. We were yeah. punching him in the head. Remember that we were punching him in the head. I broke my knuckle. <laughs> right. We were punching him yeah. in the head. Everything we got. Kicked Once, I've never kicked him in the ribs that hard. I agree with he all that. He launched into a fast forward speed <laughs> yes. for real. Like if you watch that video, it was fast forward. After he took that first bump, he, he launched into a fast forward speed. One million percent Goldberg spear. Oh yeah. Right. I mean, he was a football player. We yeah, figured it out when he did this because he did the whole tackle stand <laughs> thing, right, and he fucking so he launched into it fast forward style. Right? All right. Rob moved out of the way. 
He hit that fucking parking meter with his yeah. shoulder, and the shit sounded like an aluminum bat against it. Right, it was like, yeah. ping! And we're like, what pinged? You know what I'm saying? Right. It was his collarbone against right. that fucking yeah. parking meter. Where, Man, the whole somebody, parking somebody's, meter somebody's, bent. You would think somebody's area right here would make such a loud noise. And yeah. right then we were like, it's a right, right. rap. We were like, yo, he's, he's going to die. Yeah. It's a that. rap, and he got up. He didn't just yeah. get up. He yeah. got up. He was like, Bah! Yeah. Dog, that's saying, when you knew he was just flooded with cocaine juice, dog. He I would say up. meth. I would say meth, but this is before meth. You know what I'm saying? PCP up the <laughs> anus, dog. Right. Coke and PCP. He got up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. he hit it so hard. Yeah. It rang it like a bell. bell. Motherfuckers were shocked. Like, oh and if you would have been God. caught in that spear, <laughs> you would have. It would have fucking. You, been you been know what he ended up doing? Instantly, oh, instantly in the hospital. It was the bro. immovable object. Against the unstoppable force. Unstoppable right? force. Yeah. Those two collided. Yeah. And man, he got up. Yeah, and the parking did. meter didn't. <laughs> yeah, he got the fuck up, man. So uh, But hey, we eventually man. won. What's cool about remembering back is how everybody remembers the story a little bit different. You yeah. know what I mean? Like you kinda like the, the you know, some of the stuff. You don't remember the epic thing. spear though? No, I don't even remember. I, that. I, that was like the main. Part of it. I know. I, I, I remember. All that I remember is that, him yeah. getting back up. Yeah, I agree with all that. He got back. He just up. kept over, getting back over. up. <laughs> right. He just kept and like, getting back every up. Every time he would fall down, yeah, it was from like devil, like yeah, devil would KO him, and when he's and on the floor, then I thought, you other, see his head doing like yeah. this because motherfucker was stomping on his head. The other thing I remember, his head looked like some shocks. The other thing I remember was the other thing I remember was misery. Stabbing him with the fucking mini. No. I don't think he ever stabbed. He didn't stab I thought him. he was peppering him in no, the back. No, he, he, was, he was trying to stay. We were like, yo, go put that away. I'm trying to yeah, murder him. He, well, it wasn't a fucking, away. fucking dragon slayer. It was a little fucking. It was he, a was box quick. he was always yeah. quick to pull out the knife, but yeah. he never used right, I've never yeah. seen him use it one time. Yeah, time. okay. Maybe I remember, remember yeah. wrong. But I do remember the fucking spear. Yeah. It no, was okay. like a freight train crashing yeah. into a brick wall. Well, I'm glad it missed. Yeah, he, he, man. And I remember playing Seattle. You know, and I had my hand all wrapped up, mm -hmm. and I had a big puppet over my hand. Did you put you a know puppet what I mean? on it? Yeah, I had the one with the spider, where it looked like my hand was on the back of the spider. Oh, fuck, I remember that. you see yeah. my glove? Fuck, it was a glove that. that was sewed to the back of the spider. Yeah. My fingers were really in the legs of the I spider. Remember remember that that? Shit. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah, thing. I had that on every night on stage, and people were like, what the fuck? But my hand was broken. Yeah, because yeah, he broke your hand. You know, right, on you his got, head. Do you guys remember? One uh, day we need to have a show all about fights. Let's let's move because on. Because I got the best stories, man. Hold on, we got we got I got another fight story that was on the road where we got our ass beat actually. Uh, the majority of the crew, anyway, not me personally. I don't think I was in, in that. Uh, one. Albuquerque, yeah, it was down there in Albuquerque. Do you remember, Joe? We were doing a show down there, and you hit a ninja with the microphone. Oh yeah, I remember all that. I remember. I went to jail. Okay, yeah, you went to jail. For we that. weren't allowed to play at Albuquerque for okay. a long time. When we did that, ninja jumped out the bushes. And so this, this, is, this is a lot. This is a lot shorter story, but you hit the dude. Because he wouldn't let go of your shoe, right? He no, man, no, 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 no. All right, go ahead and tell the story. I was on stage doing the song How Many Times, and I was had my eyes closed, and I was for real fully picturing myself Eddie Vedder. That's something I used to do on stage a lot. Mm, In my mind, I would be Eddie Vedder, uh, hey, right? Yeah. Hey, and then I, when I, I see the reflection, <laughs> I, know. I wasn't Eddie Vedder. <laughs> <laughs> I was a fat clown. <laughs> but in my mind, I looked as Eddie awesome Vedder. as Eddie right, Vedder. Right, right, right. <laughs> From fucking even flow days, you know what I mean? Right. Just incredibly handsome, hair all wet, long, <laughs> down on my fucking nipples. And fucking just awesomely artistic on stage. But then I would catch a glimpse of the real me, and I'd be a fat clown, and I'd be like, oh. You know, I wonder if anybody knows Who's I think I'm Eddie Vedder right now. Because right, right. I don't even resemble anything about him right now. All right, yeah. anyway. I'm doing that moment. I'm all in this song, right? And then when I open my eyes, I'm focusing to make them out, and there's a ninja standing on stage, yeah. right? Right, right in front of me, like a foot away from me, double flipping me off, right? right okay. And it's embarrassing. I'm coming out of this, like, I'm in a song. <laughs> right, yeah. And I'm, like, open my eyes up, and I'm yeah. like, huh, what, what is this? What am I looking at? And it's just a dude flipping me off. And what does he do? He does the most ditch-headed, cock-fucking-headed thing. I don't even <laughs> like the word cock. <laughs> but he does it. Total cock thing. He fucking flips me off and then falls backward on the crowd and he's floating on the crowd and he's looking at me like... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh. Just like it's ultra cool. It doesn't even look back at it. It just falls back like... <laughs> and then just holds him up. And I was like, all right, bitch. And I took the mic stand. Oh, okay. That was it. Because yeah. I had... um. 
The <laughs> mic's mic in the mic stand. I took the mic stand and swung it like a giant iron battle axe, Rob, and right. fucking hit the forehead with the mic stand, the heavy bottom. Right, yeah. And I just remember the silence. <laughs> Like, I don't know if there was a break in the song or what. Mm. I just remember the awful, <laughs> god-awful silence, right, of, of the Stun Juggalos. Yeah. It, it was like three seconds long, like, right. and then all of a sudden it turned and erupted into cheers. You know what I mean? Right. And I was like, thank God. <laughs> I thought everybody's about to turn on me, you know what I mean? Right, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it was like silence, like, oh my God, did he just really do that? Yeah. And then it's like, the cheers came, you know? Yeah. And I remember, because after the show, I'm walking down the stairs, sopping wet. And they threw me in cuffs, man. The cops are already there? Yeah. Oh, right. They're waiting, waiting for the show to end. Oh, because you never went to your court date or something? Because I remember you had a... You no, had... I got served because yeah, right. the civil kid. Oh, the civil, kid civil. Sued me okay. civil. Okay, yeah. got you. So, so uh, the show ended, right? And everybody was cleared out. And all I saw was this guy come in. And then he... at the police station, there was five bitch-ass jug hoes mm-hmm. there to fucking ID me. Yeah. All right. And they got face paint on everything. I'm like, you punk motherfuckers, right. man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? You got face paint on everything? You here to ID that. me? Make sure it was me and not some other clown? Or not the other violent, All right, violent so, so anyway, guy. The, this guy comes in the club. He's the club owner. He just got there. Like, you know, the, the shit is all settled down. Fucking police arrested you guys, whatever. He comes walking no, in. No, let's be clear about Wait, it. I didn't get arrested. Joey never gets arrested for fighting. Right. What? Right. No, in, in, in venues, dog, every time. Any time me and you fight somebody, okay, who enough. goes to jail? Fair enough. You do. Because well, it's always a, 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 on the stage. It's <laughs> 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 not my fault you don't know how to run. Last time, we got fight, was... last time we got into a fight together was when we toured Canada, probably 2018. Yeah. Man. You went to jail then. I almost went to jail. Yeah, but the only reason but why you I... did the free, freshest thing I ever saw in my life. I was going to say, that's the only reason why I got involved. That's all you I'm doing fucking... a show. It's just a quick <laughs> side story. I'm doing a show, mm-hmm. and the guy, this guy is jumping up, like, almost like that game where you pound the moles with a big... Whack-a-mole? Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. yeah, they pop up, you pound them down, <laughs> Chuck and oh, Cheese style. Yeah. Um, this kid is popping up and whipping, like he's popping up. You see him pop up two feet above the crowd and whip an object at me. And they're coming mad close. Right. They're like just missing. I don't know. I don't know what they were, but he's mm. throwing this shit at me and he's hiding. And I'd be watching the crowd and I'd see him pop up and throw. You know, mm. he was trying to take me out. Yeah. And finally, I said, "Fuck this!" I walked to the side of the stage, jumped down, walked out to the fucking crowd, and at the very last second, Rob, he saw me coming. Right. Yeah. And we fucking. I went to grab him and he grabbed me, so we had an arm's length on each other, and we're yeah. both throwing air bombs. We're just missing, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, um, didn't matter. Yeah. Because from left field yeah. comes flying Shaggy Two Dope, dog. <laughs> right. With the fucking cold cock fucking hammer. Right. Like, out of nowhere, it looked like fucking, looked like fucking, oh, what's his name? The guy in the WWE right now, the main guy. <laughs> Fucking Roman Reigns. Roman Reigns with the Superman punch. <laughs> so he's like, yeah, I was here. Yeah, I was the guy right inside his head. I'm like, hell yeah. Right when I was all blew up and everything. You know what I'm saying? From throwing air bombs, I'm all out of breath. Here comes Joey, man. I don't even know how you noticed that on the stage. How, because I looked and you weren't on stage. <laughs> right. I saw you in some ninja. So I just fucking Joey, I just jumped on the stage. What is the best know, thing, though? Because right when I seen him, your back was starting. I want to go punch him, and I fucking missed. Pulled my feet, went, what? Oh, Bam, shit. dog, hit the floor. But all that did was made me crazy fucking mad. No, because you hit back up Superman like, punch. That's after I got back up from missing. I was so fucking hot. <laughs> I missed all of that. <laughs> uh, I missed that entire thing. Because I wasn't that far on back surgery. Because I was like, all oh, I saw no! was the Superman punch. You must have got up, I backed did. up, uh, ran. Dog, I did. Yeah. Cause when, I, when I fucking missed him, I hit that floor because <laughs> it was slippery. I was dog, yeah. But that's like, I can't explain how I awesome hot. that feeling is when you're in a fight. And you're losing your breath, you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. And then your fucking homie, who you think is way over on stage, right? Yeah, hey, just comes flying out the side of the picture, you know, and clocks the guy you can't reach no matter what, because yeah. he's applying the bitch tactic to you, you know? <laughs> and um, Joey just level headed his ass. And I was just like, so dope. And I just got back on stage all with and shit. Like, yeah, we didn't, we didn't even best. fucking miss a lyric because it was like during like a break, like during a course or something. I can't remember what song it was. <laughs> we were both back up on stage for the next shit and didn't miss nothing. It was wow. just the Great. best, man. Right. Okay, okay, so yeah, go ahead. So anyway, this guy comes in. Oh, God, we're still talking about San Francisco? No, Albuquerque. Oh, Albuquerque. Okay, that's right. Yeah, this guy comes 
comes in, he's, he's rolling with like 10 security guards. Like he, he runs the club. He's the owner. All the security guards know him. He probably had like five. There was like five security guards around him. And they're walking through the club with a present. So I'm like, oh shit, what's going on here? Like we're trying to break down, you know. Mm. You, got, you got the merch booth. So yeah, I was probably already at the hotel. Class, so I don't even remember you know, that. So I follow him because I'm like, man, this dude's really pissed. Now I didn't even hear about shit. I didn't even know Joe Club, the guy with the, the mic stand. I didn't know shit. So I'm just following the guy. He goes all the way to the back. And there's Billy, right? So he's like, he's like, you don't fuck around. You don't fuck around in Albuquerque. What do you, what the fuck's going on? You you got hit one of the fans. You fucking crazy. Da-da-da. He's yelling at Billy, right? He's just oh, ranting at him. So so Billy was like, he just stopped for a minute. And the guy the guy finally paused and he's waiting for Billy to say something. Now you know Billy's a man of few and he words. Was fully expecting Billy, my bad man. Yeah, you know? Billy was like, fuck you. <laughs> that's all he's like, that's I can't even. So I can't even duplicate it. I can't that's even, so Billy. I can't even duplicate it. How fuck he said you, it. Man. Like, just, he was just like, "Fuck you." Dog, the odds are totally against us. <laughs> that's, that's you know what I'm saying? Like, that, well, hold like, on, hold on, no. yeah, like, Is it safe to say that's Billy's catchphrase? Fuck you. <laughs> no, check it out. It so, is. It is. That's just. That's just. Right. That's just like like Chris right. turns to have a seat. Right. right. Yeah. Exactly. Like right. if, if, if it was an right. action figure, it'd be like signature <laughs> saying. Yeah. Fuck you. If you had a string on Billy's back and pull it, he'd say, "Fuck you." So so my my my. I'm thinking as I'm standing there, I would have handled it a lot different. Wait a minute, wait a minute, let me just say. I'm just saying. Billy, the odds can be that totally exactly against you. That's exactly what said the night when I was telling my story about Amsterdam with those yeah. fucking Ethiopian gang. Right? Look, <laughs> like, fuck you. Yeah, look, the odds can be totally against you, right? And and yeah. they give it, they're giving you a chance to backpedal. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Odds are totally against they're you. They're giving you a chance to be it's a like, punk. It's like us doing, four yeah. standing off against 20 and... They're like, I should fuck you up, man. What do you got to say for yourself, you punk bitch? I should fuck you guys up. And then the moment, like, you're like, okay, this is where oh, Billy Bells us out. You know what I'm saying? No. It's like, fuck you, I man. I see you right you know <laughs> Okay, it's going down. Right. No matter what. Now it's you know? official, right? I was at it. So I love it, though, I, I, man. I'm just saying, I would have handled it differently, because that was the moment to kind of defuse the guy, calm everything down, but no. Like, you know what I mean? So then when he said that, the guy was shocked. Right, because our know, fucking shit is all he, in the club. He didn't know how to fucking well, how to react, you know. So he didn't. He just stood there, and then there was a moment of silence. Everything was tense. That's and the then, best. And then once we see nothing was happening, Billy turned around and left. I'm like, all right, straight. I guess it's over, you know. <laughs> and so I turned and left. Now what happened after that? The guy told all the security, get them the fuck out my building, right? So so Billy was gone at that point. I was like moving toward the merch booth. By the time I got to the merch booth, Stefan, who was doing merch at the time, yeah. he was gone. The merch booth is just Oh, empty. he probably got scared as shit. There's like a bunch Stephen of cash. No, he got choked oh, out. Oh, okay, damn. So they choked the him. The security okay, guard you. put him in the sleeper hold yeah. until he passed out. Wow. And, and I found about this. I didn't see any of this, but yeah. they, he, they choked him out until he passed out, and they threw him outside. So he was laying on the sidewalk and passed out. out. Oh, damn. Right? And so they started kicking all our guys, like manhandling them. Uh, a couple of our guys were fighting them. Yeah. I missed all this because all I all I did was I guarantee came up, you Dougie didn't go out peacefully. Right. <laughs> oh, all I did was come, yeah there was there were scrap on the security. Mm. I came up there and I seen the merch booth empty, cash all chilling. Mm. Like there was like crazy money just chilling right there, all our merch. So I jumped behind the merch booth. I, you know I didn't know what was going. On. I thought, heard heard of what happened later, but all of a sudden security came in. There was like four security and they're looking at me like sizing me up like they're about to beat me up. And, and, and I looked back at him. I said, yeah, I'm just tearing down the merch booth, man. I'll be out of here in a second. And they were like, they were like you need to leave right now or whatever. And I was like, yeah, I'm tearing down the merch booth. I'll be out. And I guess they were like, oh, shit, it's a big dude. Mm-hmm. Maybe they just didn't decide to fucking scrap with me. You know what I mean? But they just <laughs> left me alone. So I was like, straight. I took the cash first. And I started breaking down the merch. I, and at that point, it started dawning on me. Oh, shit, they're kicking us all out. Yeah. You know, but I didn't know dudes were unconscious and fucked up and yeah. scrapping. You know what I'm saying? Anyway, the guy, when he was leaving out, and I'll never forget this, he was like, at the top of his line, again, I, I can't even duplicate how fresh it was, but it was actually pretty fresh. He was like, he was like, we don't play in Albuquerque, you know, as he was walking out, like, just all heated and just mad as fuck. We don't joke. play in Albuquerque, and to this day, I repeat that every chance I get. We don't play in Albuquerque. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll remember that when we do the fucking uh, the, the Monster of Live of 
Plus the yeah. last five at Albuquerque. We were we were the banned. Wolf yeah, we were banned from there after forever. that. Forever. Yeah, forever, man. We couldn't yeah. get back in forever. And I remember I'm so fresh about the 505 Juggalos. Yeah, right. They come see you. Right, exactly. Yeah, and yeah, not yeah. nearby neighboring states, and they let you know their right. presence is there. Exactly. They can't right. 505 Albuquerque and shit. Yeah, it's right, legendary. Yeah, yeah. Those but, Juggalos wait, are the best. It was, it was so dope because, like, you know, the fallout from that, you know what I'm saying? Like, like fucking years later, you know what I'm saying? We knew that fucking mm-hmm. Joe had a fucking warrant. You know what I'm saying? No, we didn't. Oh no, we did. We we when did. that guy came out. We let me, let me finish. Wow, I know we did because because when we were there and the backstage was chilling, we had fucking people blocking off both sides of the street on both fucking shits all day long, knowing that Serve Man was floating around. You know what I'm saying? So we were mad careful. Like they got we got our people got there mad early. Like we had people on this side of the street, this side of the street. Could nobody get by? Anybody doesn't know what Serve Man is. Um, it's our number one enemy. But yeah, um, serve man is what it is, yeah. is when somebody's suing you for like a civil suit or something, you know, they're always going to win money, you know? And, um, but the, 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 the case, the trial, the whatever it is, won't go to court until You're they officially paper. serve you. Like a ninja has to hand you an actual envelope, meaning you've been served. Hey, you're gonna, like that movie, you've got to go to court when you yeah, get, you can yeah, go to yeah. jail. Yeah. If you don't go to court... Once you've been served, right. but they have to serve you. Yeah, you got to get that. So they, you, they will you, you, have to, you have to accept your name from the guy. Like, Are you so and so? Yes, you've been served. served. They say you've been served. We call him serve man. So being entertainers, you know, we get served man a lot, you know, and um, we've developed techniques and skills of how to avoid service, right. especially at the office. Right. So mm. so we knew it was coming from the shit that happened at Albuquerque, and this was years later after we were allowed to come back to Albuquerque. So this was fucking crazy years later, you know what I'm right, saying? Yeah. But we knew Serve Man was floating around, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So we secured the fucking, both sides of the fucking street, a whole block, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Nobody can get in and out, you know what I'm saying, besides us and our crew, you know what I'm saying? So fucking, we come from the hotel, and we stay at the hotel all day, everything, you know what I'm saying? We're like, yo, fuck that, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So finally, we, 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 we fucking, we get to the venue, we hurry up, jump in the fucking bus or whatever, we're waiting to go and do a meet and greet or whatever the fuck we did then, you know what I'm saying? Quit saying I know what I'm saying. Sorry, that's what I say, you know what I'm Stop. saying? Stop. <laughs> can't help it. It's a fucking right. unconscious thing. Stop so anyhow, so we, we walk out the bus and fucking out of the fucking bush next to the fucking door from the venue. The, the, the most scantily the skinny weak skinny fucking, bush. The skinniest. The, the, the bush couldn't even conceal a fucking green dog. It was like a cartoon. Like a ninja like this big, like hides behind a pole and he's just gone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so fucking this dude jumps out of the fucking a piece of sagebrush. <laughs> Like mm-hmm. fucking riddle box. Word up! And fucking, he's just like this skinny fucking cowboy. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like he's been at the bar all day, but no, he's been hiding in the fucking bush all day. And fucking, are you uh, Joe Bru- Joseph Bruce? And he was so fucking shocked. He was just like, yeah. There was nothing. Right. This walkway was the best because we're like a hundred feet or hundred yards down, right? For this walkway was nothing. <laughs> no corner, nothing to hide behind, but this little weed. It's, right. it's, it's like these sage brushes, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was yeah. a little, like the size of a beach ball. A little, Wait, is that what it's called? Sage fucking tumbleweed. bush. It was yeah. like a tumbleweed. And there's nothing but wide open. We're like, there's no chance of serve, man. You know, yeah. anybody can hear us, but you see him from forever. He was just like, <laughs> that motherfucker stood like a rock on a cartoon. He's like, yeah, you've been served. <laughs> we're like, where the fuck did he come from? We were so fucking mad, dog. Don't like, he right. rose up and he's like, he's like, Joe, Joe Bruce. You know, but he was an older dude. Right. And I'm just like, yes. <laughs> Fully aware. <laughs> yeah, I just was so shocked. Right. right yeah. Yes. You know, There's you no just... way it could have been served, man. This shit was so out of lock. Right. Yeah, this yeah. guy fucking just posted up he, all he day it to me. Yeah, in a like... fucking bush. Right. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> That's right. So anyhow, yeah. So go ahead. My bad. <laughs> I remember that when I when I hit that kid mm. um, and you guys had to leave on the road. I was right. in jail. Yeah. Right, yeah. You guys had to leave. Yeah, no, no, no. Billy bailed me out. Mm. Right? I was at a hotel. You guys mm. had to leave. I had to fly out the next day mm. to um and I didn't have nobody with me. Well, that was crazy. Yeah, I don't know. I can't I didn't have nobody with me. Do you never remember right? you're in that situation no, right, right. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Billy was like, You gotta go to this court at eight in the morning. Ah. You know? So yeah. I had a hotel right next to the courtroom. Yeah. And um I didn't have nobody with me. That's insane. Mm-hmm. But anyway, you guys mm-hmm. left and um I go down to the courtroom and the news was there, all these media. I'm like, oh, there must be some big ass, you know, local story going on, like some murderer, or some politician right, yeah. smoking crack or something. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, there's gonna be some big ass news story. This is awesome. I hope I get to see about it. You know? And then all of a sudden, one of them was like, 
you know, with the camera. Right, yeah. And I'm still not re realizing what's happening. I got no paint on, you know? Yeah. And they're like, there he is. And they start coming at me. It's, it's the fucking paparazzi. Right. Yeah. And I had to fucking duck into the men's bathroom and hide in this stall. Right. And they're coming in there. And they're like, are you coming out? And I'm like, no. You know? This is my privacy. You can't stick that camera. And, and this, over is, here. this is before, like, and, there's, like Matt, like you know, saying like before we take a picture without paint on and shit. And I'm explaining yeah. to them, I'm like, I, I don't have my paint on. You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't do an interview or something. If you give me something to hide my face, I'll talk to you guys. You know? And they're just like waiting and waiting. And finally, my attorney showed up, mm. and he came into the bathroom and kicked them all out. You mm. know? And um, somehow we just were able to make it work from there. Right. But yeah, that was crazy. Yeah. Is my attorney tell a story? Uh, yeah, because you, well, you let up with it. Uh, you guys are ping ponging this shit. I, I've yeah. been telling mad stories. Yeah, go ahead, right man. Now. Yeah, because I brought up San Francisco. Got, that, was, that, was, that was my Man, opera. we could but actually that. have a fucking fight thing. Fight I, I, got another, I got another fight story I could tell. Oh, I got Man, we got, we I got, got no shortage. endless fight stories. Right. I'm going to tell I'm going to take it in another direction. No, I'm going to tell a quick little thing, and then I'm going to take it in another direction. Oh, okay, good. I ain't got a long story at all, though. Yeah. But um, <clears throat> one time, one of my favorite... Fight stories, if you can even call it that. It's not. It's just something funny that happened. We're in Deep Ellum Live in Texas. Yeah. Deep Ellum. It's like an yeah. area of all clubs mm -hmm. and shit. Kind of like the flats in Cleveland. A lot of, or the, the, yeah. It's like know, an area the, where there's the like Austin, four Austin, blocks of all clubs, yeah. all kinds yeah. of clubs. And so we're down there passing out flyers. And um, I see these two hotties coming. And I'm like, hey, do you guys like rap? Check this out. I give them the flyer. And she's like, cool. And throws it in the air. Like, fuck you, you know? Right. And I was like, oh, fuck you. And she turned around, she said, what? Fuck you! And I'm like, fuck you, bitch. You know, so she keeps going, right? <laughs> Such a fresh thing. About 15 minutes later, we're standing on the corner, and you just see this kid <laughs> beelining right toward me, marching, looking like, <laughs> right. you know? And I'm thinking, oh, shit, this is her man. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he fucking is coming at me. It's a red light. He just marches right across the street. He's not running. He's fucking coming to me. Halfway across the street, he's like, did you tell my girl, fuck you? And I fucking joined him. I started walking right with him. And I shoved him, Rob, so fucking hard. He flew backward. Did the infamous backward somersault. Yeah, yeah. Got to his feet, was in the yeah. other direction, walking and started be walking the other way. Yeah. It was so funny. He was on such a mission. Yeah, yeah. He was coming at me full speed, and yeah. I was like, yeah, bitch, I shoved him. Right, he flew right. down, got up, didn't miss a beat, only in the other direction. Right. And I was like, you right. punk ass motherfucker, that's it. He was gone. Let me, let me tell you a quick, real quick story similar to that. All right, so we're doing promotional work. I think we were in Denver. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it was Denver. We're, we're in a parking lot, and there's a crew of ninjas around us. We're passing out CDs and all that. It's kind of late, like maybe like 10 o'clock. All of a sudden, this car is making the turnaround, right? It's a two, two, like a pretty busy street, you know, with a boulevard in the middle. And he's making the turnaround, and all I hear out the window, fuck ICP. <laughs> and I look over, oh, God, that's and there's so a ninja and his girl in the passenger seat, mm -hmm. right? And so he... He's taking off down the road. He gets stopped at the red light, uh -oh. right? So I just start running, like as, <laughs> for, as fast as I can. I'm running. Fuck it. This is turning into the fight night now. <laughs> right? yeah, oh, I got yeah. too many no, more. No, 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 I'll this, reel it back when I come back. This ain't. This ain't. This doesn't have a crazy fresh. Energy. To me, it was super fresh. Anyway, I'm running at the dude, and I see him. He notices me coming, right? And he's looking up at the red light. And he notices he's doing like this, looking in the mirror, looking for it. Like, what's this light gonna change? <laughs> When I start getting close, he guns it, right? Arr, sliding, fucking oncoming traffic. They're slamming on their brakes to avoid hitting him. That's how terrified this dude was, you know? And then he took off, and I was like, I was just standing there. I was like, man, that motherfucker has to live with that the right. rest of his yeah. fucking life. Me, and I'll, you I'll, know, you know his girl. It wasn't even a whole crew. It was like one guy. One guy. Right. And it was just me. It was just me running at him. And he's got to live with that the rest of his life. And his girls had to be looking at him sideways. Let me sideways. beat that story Hold real on. quick. Had to be looking at him sideways like, what 
the bitch. You know what I mean? Like, no, Rob, I'm bitch, shutting yo. that down the way you shut me down the other night God, with your God. story that made my story look fucking pathetic. Oh, when, I, I got another when one. I broke down just like you. I got, oh, you another, had a pack one. Of wild I got another one along the same line, so you don't get I to might tell be it. able to trump your story. No, next. you don't get to tell it. You've already <laughs> told your limit tonight. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing here? What happened to the sheep? Where's the sheep? No, we're not taking a commercial break. We got too many fresh stories going on. Where, where's the sheep, man? <laughs> Fuck, I don't want to tell him. I don't want to break the fuck out the window. He ahead, disappeared. What? I don't want to take another one. No, we don't need to take another one, right? No, go ahead. Don't All right, good. Me. Anyway, listen. Um, okay, me and Joey, insane style, used to go to Birmingham, Birmingham where mom cleaned houses. Yeah. And just beat kids. You know what I'm saying? Because we fucking oh, hated rich people. Is that a road story? No. no that's <laughs> that's true. True. It, was, it wasn't no. at home. He, he's he's right. Right. Okay, go it wasn't at home. It was in a different city. <laughs> but, but listen, listen. Um, two two stories. It, now I'm gonna have to put my other story on hold. But I got two stories to, to play off Rob's. The first one is, I'm, we're in Birmingham. Um, we used to do this deal where we'd all everybody be ducking in the car except me, and I'd be driving, and then I'd just kind of be looking at somebody, and then they'd be like, "What the fuck are you looking at?" And then we'd all rise up <laughs> out of the car. <laughs> just to um, beat up rich kids. Yeah, yeah, just to beat up rich kids. We were lame for that, by the way, too, because um, uh, yeah. you know, anyway. That was just lame. But we, we didn't know any better. So um, I'm walking through. There was like a fair going on in, in, in downtown Birmingham, right? Okay. I'm walking through downtown Birmingham. And this car like, races up behind me. And, and I step out of the way. And as they're passing me, they're all hanging out of the window. The girls, it was like slow motion, everything. They're like, fuck you, asshole, out of the way, you know? Mm. And I'm like, oh, for real? So I start running, chasing them. They're going just fast enough <laughs> to where I can't catch them. I'm fully ready, Rob. Right, I got you. <laughs> They're just going like 20 miles an hour laughing. They're having the best time. Right. I'm such a fool. You know what I mean? Right. This pathetic idiot trying to catch us. They're laughing. <laughs> they're wearing a car, you dumb so fuck. So <laughs> they finally leave and they're all laughing. Middle fingers out the window, screaming and laughing. And I'm like, the sons of bitches, you know, angst. See them with anger, right? Right. About 20 minutes later, we're just walking around downtown where the fair was, and there's the car oh, in traffic. There's so many at times a red that light. shit happens. There's the right. fucking car right, right. there. Why did it fucking leave? Right. There it is, set full of the same people, <laughs> right. stereo no. knocking and everything. Yeah. So I duck down and I ninja between cars. I'm running yeah. up to the car. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> it's man. the freshest thing in the world. <laughs> and I hope people understand what I say mean by this. Dog, I fucking get to the car, I open the door. Driver door, yes. and all you see is him sitting like you don't see this normally. Right. Him sitting like this, all glowed to the floor. He's sitting <laughs> like you don't realize you're actually sitting on your ass flying on the street when you're driving. Like if the car was to disappear, right, yeah. you're just sitting on your ass flying on the street. <laughs> when you look at a kid sitting in the car, he looked funny. He was just sitting there on his ass, and he's like, <laughs> he looks at me, and I immediately start drilling his face, Rob. Right, yeah. <laughs> It was so beautiful. I'm yeah. punching his face like, punk motherfucker, all that shit you talk. Got you, got you, got you. I'm beating him, beating, beating him. And she's like, stop, stop. And I'm like, shut up, bitch. And she's like, ah. Right. And I keep hitting him and I run, right? right? Cars are honking behind us, everything. I run. What was the conversation in that car? Right. <laughs> Right, it's not, you, it's not like you were yeah, wrong. Yeah, Nobody yeah, yeah. was jumping out. Shit. Nobody was piling out. The yeah. joke wasn't funny no more. Like, right, 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 right. it was like, Jim, are you okay? Jim, you know, no, my fucking. You know, right. what was the conversation like? Should have talked that shit. You got right. eight people on that motherfucker. One guy right. beat the driver down. Did awesome. nobody do shit? And they didn't do shit. That was the best. Right. <laughs> Another thing. This is even cooler. We're coming back from the road. Okay, road story. <clears throat> no, we're coming up. Yeah, technically, we're coming back from the road. My truck is out front of the the venue, or the the office. What am I talking about? I'm loading my suitcase into my truck. Right, car drives by, stereo system. Guy and his girlfriend. He's like, "Fuck ICP." Same thing. God, right. he's having so I'm like, much. He's having a lot. I'm like, so much. "All right, bitch, jump in the truck." I'm right on his oh, ass, shit. like a fool. They go to the 7-Eleven on the corner. <laughs> I'm like, this can't be happening, right? right? They think I'm gone. <laughs> they think they didn't, you know, they didn't know I'm chasing them. I cut right through the fucking traffic. Cars coming in. I don't care. I fucking buzz right through the traffic. Pull up right next to their car. It was the best, Rob. Right. I got out. I started beating the kid. 
right in front of his girlfriend. And I said, say you're a bitch. Right. And he said, he's like, I'm a bitch, I'm a bitch. And I'm like, let her hear you. Let her hear you. And he's like, I'm a bitch, I'm a bitch. You know what I mean? Right. And what was that like? Again, what was right. that like when I left you? Know, right. I didn't instigate shit. Well, I, know, right. I was just minding my own loading my car. They yeah. drove by shit talk. I got them. Right. You know what I mean? Right. And that was great, man. But you know what? You, you might have saved his life down the road because he probably didn't talk shit again to nobody else. Right. He, was, exactly. you know what I'm yeah, he couldn't talk sure. shit to the wrong person. It turns got out the girl he was with you worked her. at 7-Eleven. Oh, that one? That girl that's always up there? No, not okay. her. Oh, a different uh, one. Uh, before her. Okay. But she worked at 7-Eleven. I yeah. ended up fucking her. Nice. <laughs> All right. I took her out and I was like, what happened that day? And she's like, oh, that was so pathetic. I'm like, tell me the whole story. She's like, we were just driving. I didn't know he was going to do that. He just leaned out and said that. I said, hey, you know, that's ICP's office. And he was like, oh, yeah, watch this. Fuck you, ICP, you know. And then he's laughing about it. They got to the 7-Eleven. I came flying in out of nowhere. And she was just like, he was a joke. Like, he was an, he was an asshole after that. Like, what? It was just so awkward. We never saw each other again. <laughs> you know well, I mean, what can he say? It's fucking right. guy. <laughs> uh, so, so, real quick, I'll make this real short. So uh, we were in the Riddle Box van, and two two guys in the car. The drivers in the turnaround, right there on Woodward, and um, anyway, the Bell Tire, uh, thirteen mile on Woodward, the Bell Tire right there. And he's making the turnaround, and all I hear, I see him. He's looking right at me. He's like, "Fuck, I see P out the window." He thought he was good because we were stuck at the light. He was making the turnaround in front of us. So boom, all of a sudden, turns green. I'm like right on him. So I follow him right into the bell tire. He gets out and he thinks he's safe because he's like, <laughs> he like walks off quick into the bell tire. Now he's standing there in the middle of the shop where they're working on all the cars and shit. Had to be like 10 employees that he works Bad with. Bad judgment. Right? And boom, I come right. He turns around. He's looking at me thinking I'm not going to do nothing. I come right up and I push him right on his fucking ass. And then I go to grab his fucking friend. He's like, I didn't say anything. He's like, Just, I didn't say anything. Right. You know, he's, and he did it. You know what I mean? So I look at him, and I see there's no fight in him. He's just, like, laying down, like, terrified, and I'm, like, looming over him. And I said, man, you're a fucking bitch. Your mom's a bitch. <laughs> fuck you, and fuck your whole family. You know what I mean? And I stood, and I waited about 10 seconds to see if he's going to do anything or talk shit back. Fuck no. If he would have said anything, he would have been decimated. You know what I mean? Didn't say anything. I was like, all right, I'm straight. And I turned that, around that, and left. That, that, now, that, check it out. He's got to go to work. Did he go? Did he finish his day? You know what I mean? How could he do anything? At Everybody that just point? saw him say Every, his, his whole, all his fucking peers, no, right. all his his friends at the What happened? Place, well, I said <laughs> fuck him, and he came and fucked me up. <laughs> you know what I mean? He, well, he was not doing know. anything. He was yeah. He just zone. attacked me, and like an asshole, I just said fuck ICP. <laughs> fuck they, and they, they came and punked me out. They didn't get that story. You know, you think about some it, crazy guy just came in here. You think about it, like all the shit talkers, the trolls, the haters, like everybody. Talk shit on a bunch online. of bitches. They're oh, yeah. from a distance. They're they're the same yeah, motherfuckers. Same they will yell that shit yeah, out when the they're car. driving in a car, exactly. thinking they're safe, thinking they could just yell something, mm -hmm. take off, and be out of there. People you know? think they're so safe because they're yeah. in the car. If they think they're safe, they we're teenagers. They used to be the fuck. biggest shit. Dog. Oh, my brother thinks safe. Fuck. We'll follow you home. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You, know I mean? you gotta out. get out that fucking car eventually. Here's my yeah. story. Here's my story. Um, we used to watch this DVD. I don't know where we got it. It was called Southern Discomfort. I got that in my shit. Anderson, I got that shit Alabama. right there, homie. Oh, no, tomorrow yeah. I got uh, like the story. I got this, I got I, Aniston. We loved this. Every night we'd watch it going to bed. Every and every afternoon night. before the show, every yeah. evening before the show. No, we would we wheel the fucking watch TV it, and watch it. We had the TV on a fucking. Billy had us had it on a um, like something you push in. It was like a. It's, a fucking it's like the motherfucker when you were like, in school. The like, oh, yeah, like yeah. yeah. in your room. Movie day. They push the TV okay. in so we can watch TV, right? And we just watched this DVD religiously. Listen, it was called Southern Discomfort, and it chronicled mad, small, bootleg wrestling. Yeah. Yes. At, in southern towns. Like, as southern as you can get, It's Rob. one card, though. And it, the it, wrestlers were fucking hilarious. Right, like, right. this guy with a big tear in his mask, and you can see his cheek hanging out. <laughs> and, um... <laughs> Then they interview him and he's like works at a, um Arby's. His and name is like, his name is The Flame. Yeah, he called his wrestling name was The Flame. And he when they interview him, he's he's talking about, oh, you know my customers come in here, they know me. You know, they know I'm a nice he's guy, like, but when yeah, I he, get he, that he, mask he, on, boy, he worked he worked out. at like a fast food place. Yeah. 
But he was like the manager, but he brought his own oven in to make fresh, fresh big biscuits. I'd be seeing more shit mm. yeah, whatever, at that time. <laughs> whatever the fuck it was, he did, on the, on the, on the uh, DVD. Yeah, on, on the documentary, like he like they showed him like in the morning, all early cooking the documentary biscuits, was fresh in the fast food place. He's a, yeah. just an upstanding southern gentleman. The <laughs> documentary was <laughs> insanely short, fat guy. hilarious. Yeah, the wrestling was. was Fucking hilarious. Because they were so serious about it. And it, it was, was just, so the bottom was so shitty. And the yeah, crowd was, was like, they're good. literally They were promoting. static. They had the Iron Sheik on their card. <laughs> they're promoting. <laughs> and the fucking, they're on like desolate dirt roads. And they pull the car over and tag a flyer to a telephone pole. There's nothing but cornfields for here, miles. Here, here, I, I, yeah. I know you guys never heard of this. And the only people that have ever heard of this probably is who lives there and surrounding area. Aniston, Alabama. Yeah, Aniston, where, where Alabama, that? right? Uh, and uh, we just watched that documentary. It was like it was like the fucking uh, Abdullah one. It would just bring comfort to <laughs> us. Some you know? wrestlers are in color, <laughs> some are not. Yeah. That was his interview. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> and the, the action was just fucking oh, no, hilarious. It was phenomenal. It was so the, the, the two big fucking names in the card was Bullet Bob Armstrong. And fucking and the Iron Sheik. Yeah. It was so bad, right? So um, we loved it though. We it just oh, it was, it was comforting to watch it. It was it was so bad, you know. Probably like a Thomas Tang movie, you know what I mean? Oh right. Yeah, it was the equivalent of wrestling. Wrestling's Thomas Tang. Right. I mean, I we really you. became rabid fans for these guys. All right. of them. Dog right. knew right. their name. Fucking dog. Yeah. So we had a day <laughs> off on tour. We were already somewhere down south. Deep south. And we're south. like, where's Aniston, Alabama. We had the day off the next day. We're like, we want to go to Aniston, Alabama, you know? Oh, so they're like, it's going to be overdrive. That whole day from morning to night. If you was drive insane. too far <laughs> out of your range, yeah. or, or if you go on your normal so it's range. It's like however many miles or hours, and you got to pay overdrive. If you, if you drive over 500 miles, it's overtime. It's The, the driver gets overtime, and it's, it's like another overdrive. 500 bucks. Something crazy. Plus you gotta, it's just yeah. a lot, you know? Yeah. But we were like, he was like, it's going to be an override. We're like, we don't give a fuck. Let's yeah. go, you know? So we woke up the next day. We're actually in Aniston, Alabama. The, the right. little tiny fucking hick town in the middle of fucking as south as it gets in Alabama. Man, we, had the yeah. we were scared time. at first. We go right to the restaurant. We're like, we're looking for the fling, you know? They're, they're like, he don't work here. He don't no work here no more. No! And we're like, right. no. And they're like, but we know where he does work. We're like, yes! You know? Right. It, was just like, a, it was an actual real restaurant he worked at now. And there was a picture on the wall of the flame. Right. Yeah, like awesome. a little <laughs> tiny picture, and he was on the wall of the flame. We're like, yes, we're close, you know? Yeah. So uh, we went to where he works, and we pile in there, man, and the flame comes out of the back. I, I still got my Jeez. picture. I still I mean, got he's my... so happy, Rob. ICP showed up to meet him. We're like, yeah. and he heard of us because we had yeah. been in like WCW oh, and WWF yeah, and all that. Yeah, yeah. so and he's he heard just of us. A fucking freshest, and he just comes <laughs> out and we're like, flame, you know. <laughs> and we just talked to him and interviewed him. And you shook still his got your picture with him? Skin and... I still got my picture. Yeah, me I mean, you I don't and Tom Dunn, him Dunn. I still got that motherfucker. Oh, though. Man. Uh, it was like... the best, right? Yeah, it was great. So we hung out with the flame, and we went to some other wrestlers. Found out where they're at and went and met them. Well, hold on, because because uh, but right after we met him, we had our buses and Cottonmouth Kings were with us, and we had their bus and some other some other people were with us. So we had all our I buses pull up to this big ass fucking park that was in the middle of town. And so we, we were just barbecuing all day, giant barbecue, playing like five hundred and shit. You know what I'm saying? We had it's a fucking I can't believe this is true. What I'm about to say, but it's true. We were at the park, right? With the Cat Mom Kings bus, our bus, and I think there was an opening band. Yeah, there, there was too. another bus. Yeah, because yeah. I used their skateboard and fucked um, myself up. We had a giant. Oh, everybody went to Aniston, Alabama, all out. Yeah, the whole the whole tour. And we there. had a fucking oh, huge okay. barbecue there. And um, the police came and put a perimeter around us. Right. Oh, okay. okay. So nobody can come to us. In the entire, I was gonna tell this. I knew I was gonna tell this because this is this is the, our favorite thing to do on the road. Small. Tiny towns it are so much fun. Right. You know, yeah, when yeah. word gets out like everybody that you're there, knows you're there, the whole fucking town. You're talking, there's no way these people <laughs> can listen to your shit. There's just no way. Well, they but all they know it's there because of wrestling. Right. They all they're, they're like, something's happening. Somebody's, something's happening. Right. Something's, something's, happening. Happening. something's they bubbling. Somebody's they know here. You're, can I have your autograph? You're like, right. somebody's here. They don't here. even know your name. Exactly. I always put Abdul the Butcher. <laughs> so we're having this picnic. So if you've ever got an autograph for me that says Abdul the Butcher, you know why. <laughs> we're at this town having a picnic, barbecue, playing baseball, all kinds of shit. And there's a perimeter all the way around us in the entire town. Is there, Rob? Right? People looking like mom, 
right. are there. Just watching right. us. Just watching. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, there's no way they know who anybody is over yeah, here. You right. know what I mean? Hundreds are just watching. Like They're actually in lawn chairs just <laughs> watching. Just right, 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 right. <laughs> All the way around the place. Anyway, it was a fucking... We're like, this is crazy. Like, we, we were just... It was such it was just much a spectacle to us right. as it was them. Because <laughs> right. we're just like, we're watching them. Like, what the <laughs> fuck is going on over here? Anyway, I it wish was like two whole like, different worlds just looking right. at each I other. I wish there was like some kind of epic crescendo. To the mm. story, and I guess there is, in my in my in my opinion. There's a dot on um, my. <laughs> we we fucking we did that until the sun went down, and then we're like, "Is there any titty? There's no titty bars around here." You know what I mean? And they're like, "No," but like thirty miles away, there's a titty bar in the next town over. So we go there. Everybody goes there, and um, I didn't. It was a strip club, and every girl I was there knocked out. Every girl there. This one, I lose a lot of respect. And I don't care. <laughs> Every girl, I keep it real, man. Anybody, anybody loves me, love me like I am. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Flaws and all. You know what I'm saying? Sure. And I ain't saying a flaw. This is a fucking something cool about me. Anyway, <laughs> so we get there. All the girls there are available. They're like, they're all like, it's a hooker yeah, place. Can, basically, yeah. if you get a lap dance from us, we'll do whatever you want in the back. You yeah, know what I mean? Like a dick. Total what privacy. Mean? Every girl there was a hooker. Hmm. And it's just like crazy. But I wasn't about it. I'm like, I ain't, I ain't trying to, I'm not, I'm not a hooker type dude. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Until she came out. <laughs> right. This fucking angel what in a white a wedding beauty, dress, right? Girl. A wedding dress. And you know what she was dancing to? Cry, little sister. <laughs> and I remember just looking at her like, I'm in love for real. Like that song was so awesome. Well, I'm in love with a stripper? I went oh, back. That song. <laughs> and rewrote it for Zog Island. Yeah, yeah. Right, you know? Right. Oh, yeah. But, man, it was so great watching her dance to that song. I hadn't had, I heard that song in years. Man, I was like, where do you go to the back? You know what I mean? Mm. They they showed me, and I went back, and I partaked. <laughs> <laughs> he said, I partaked. My night was a lot Dude. fucking stellar. I didn't eat yeah. that day, even though it was mad barbecue, and we were all yeah. drinking heavily that day. So I was fucking gone. Then the opener, not Cottonmouth Kings, the other one, they were a bunch of skateboarders. So I was like, let me see your skateboard. I'm going to skate down this drain pipe down this hill. <laughs> so bad. Into a fucking, this little dirty lake in the bottom of the drain pipe. Uh, so I made it halfway down. I hit a sidewalk and skidded on my, let, fell on my face and skidded the rest of the way down on my face. So I put like band-aids on my face, painting up and so stuff. So bad. It basically knocked me out. You know what I'm saying? So I was out on my feet. I went to the bus and passed out. That was like a black eye on the, on the awesome day. Yeah, it was. Right. No, yeah. And the thing guy. that stuck the worst is it happened to me. I still got like, it shoot the, I got scars all over me. He's so head. fucked up. <laughs> Not fucked up, take me and drunk. Like, yeah. the accident was terrible. Oh, no, there was like a right. fucking, like, like I, he, he looked I still terrible, got like you know? all these scars over yeah. my cheekbone. My fucking skin was hanging down and shit. It was and fucking he's just bad. painting up the next day. <laughs> I had to. Right. The show's got to go on. I just got like this. But man, I just, I'll never forget bending. that angelic girl. Like, I'll never, ever, ever, ever forget that wedding dress, the blue neon in the wedding dress going. Uh, yeah, I remember you explaining and all that shit. In the awesome yeah. day. Yeah. Right. In the, in the, the flame. I, I remember. I remember fucking like like when everybody came back from the bar, like because like I'd been out for hours by that point. So I, I was all groggy, still had like I was walking the front trying to get the story. Was like go the fuck back to bed. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like oh man, but like a little kid. I got just I got put back to bed. By With the exception of that travesty <laughs> that happened to Joey, that was like one of the freshest days on the road. Yeah, it was, no, uh, it, even with it, it was still fucking one of the awesomest days. You know what I'm saying? Just being the flame and hanging out, it was great. You know what I'm saying? Right. It was awesome. Uh, let's let's. Take and a, I was with uh, my girlfriend at the time. Remember Sharon? Yeah. I was with Sharon, and Sharon, who's bisexual, she went back and got with a girl <laughs> beforehand, and she was right. like, she was the one egging me on to go back there. Right. Right. She's right. like, just go ahead, you can you can do whatever you want with her, you know. And yeah. I, and if she hadn't done that. Yeah, you probably ten minutes ago, yeah, the girl probably wouldn't have been as alluring as she was in the wedding dress. You know what I mean? Yeah, 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 but just yeah, craziness. Yeah. It was all so awesome. All right, let's let's turn take, this mother out. Let's oh, right. take a quick break. By the way, uh, hold on. Yeah, what was yeah. the song you did? Was it "Turn This Mother Out"? Yeah, turn this mother out. Yeah, no, this, uh, yeah, turn this mother out. Right? Okay, I think so. Juggalo's watching at home. Yeah, because two bag MC. Yeah, let's turn this. Mother he- out. Check this out. If you would like to hear, oh, so we gotta look for Jump it. Steady with Shaggy Two Dope, oh, Turn This Mother Out, so MC Hammer remake. Vote now. If we so get over thirty, <laughs> if we get over. Yeah. Rudy, you out there? If we get over fifty votes, hundred votes, okay, 
100 votes. Can we make we it will a, include. Can we make nah, it a thousand? Can we make don't it make no thousand? promises. Yeah, we, don't we don't even, even find it. We don't even know if it exists. Yeah, we, it's, it was, it's, it's like, like buried. if we can't find it, you guys have to remake oh, it. Shit. <laughs> Not a chance. We ain't, Come on, man. I ain't got no time for that, man. <laughs> Come on, we gotta make our songs. We got we gotta make a million songs. We why don't we just? Why song? don't maybe on the next show we just play or or you know at some point we just play it on. What do they want? The hear it one time or fucking own it? Oh man, they want to bump it, Rob. It's bad. If you vote over a hundred, well I'm. I'm gonna veto that. If we can find it, I'm with it. I'm not yeah, redoing it, but if yeah. we can find it in its original awesomeness. If we find it, if we find it, type a capital oh, letter God. R for Rob that you wanna hear. <laughs> Turn this mother out. All right? right. Drum <laughs> Steady featuring Shaggy Tudo, never heard before, never released. It will be included on your EP that you will get in the bag for ordering this stream. If we awesome. can find it. If we can find it. If not, I thought they make it again. I, well, that's not happening. <laughs> oh, all right, <laughs> straight up. We, <laughs> all right, yeah. If we can't find it, don't be salty. Sorry. I mean, your your part was fresh. I, well, I, I really enjoyed it. The easiest it. part in the world. That's yeah, right. If it's terrible, awesome. it needs to be on there. All right, yeah, yeah. I promise you'll it, include it no matter what it sounds we'll like. We'll try to we'll it. try to find it. Yeah, we we'll try to. It's got to be on one of those hard drives. I bet you we can find it. Like for real, I bet you. So no matter what it sounds like, you'll include it. It's probably in your cast in what in the. The DVD, the CD, they yeah, get, for sure. Yeah. They're getting an EP with this, right? That's the only song. You know how like you guys got mad songs that never came. Solid Light of Day. Yeah, like, yeah. Be, be that is literally the only song that you have that's never that released. I did that yeah. never saw the light of wow. day. That's the only song. Mm. I want to hear it badly. So do I. And I mostly so do I. want the jungles but, to hear it. Are yeah. we, how are we doing all those votes? It's probably already way past the hundred. Capital letter R. You know what? Uh, you hated it. You did hear it once. Yeah, but not that was then. Yeah. Now that it's yeah, not taken because seriously, Rob, it's gonna be great. I don't give a fuck if you're. <laughs> right. I don't give a fuck if you're Drake. I don't give a fuck if you're Super Rhymes. You cannot remake certain songs. You okay. can't remake that. But anyway, let's go to a cr- uh, quick break. When we come back, I was thinking we could switch it, switch it up a little bit. I got a great story to switch it up. Oh, okay, fair enough. All right, so when we come All back. All my stories ended in fighting the fucking. So I'm here. What, what, oh, well, just I, I was kind of yeah. thinking we could talk about like girls on the road, just like touch. Well, upon before that we do so. that, I got a fucking crazy funny story. All right, I got you. All right, so we're gonna go to a quick break, and we'll be back. I'm gonna taking a break. Yeah, uh, because you, you you had that the um you already nitty commercial. You said you wanted the what? Isn't there a nitty commercial? Oh yeah. Oh, oh we do, are we able to put that on right now? Yeah. Uh, yeah really? So, so oh we, sweet. Check out. We'll be right back. <laughs> okay, straight. Hey. Back again with more stories from the road, getting attacked by Gunther a little bit. Yeah, so <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna go ahead and kick that story off oh, real yeah, quick. Yeah, go ahead. Um, and it may lead to other things, or who knows, you know what I'm saying? Whatever the fuck. But um, once again, don't know the fucking year. I don't know when the fuck it was. It was sometime probably like in the earlier 2000s, whatever the fuck. Um, and uh, once again, we are on the road. Picture that. <laughs> right. Okay. But um, we we uh, we used to carry a. Cadillac DeVille behind us. It was Joe's actual car. And this is before we started carrying minivans and shit with us. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. Like, we didn't think about renting a car at that point or whatever the deal was. You know, Joe's like, fuck it. We need a car. I'm going to bring my car. You know what I'm saying? So, but you got to realize, there's like fucking 10 motherfuckers on the bus. You know what I'm saying? We had, and like everybody just thought they could just use the car. So we were always posse up at least fucking like eight deep at the DeVille, eight full grown men. Right. You know what I'm saying? Just <laughs> fucking so packed in there, just going to eat and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So um, uh, uh, G Man was on the road with Sin from Zug Island was on the road with us, and usually you know he he usually like dresses like in like motorcycle boots and like you know leather coat and like tight jeans and stuff. You know he's a fucking rock and roll ninja. You know what I'm right, saying? Right. Yeah. But they he came on the road with us. He was hanging out with us. All of a sudden he had like a fucking sweatsuit on. You know what I'm saying? He had these fucking shoes. These <laughs> fucking Nikes. They were like uh, that purple color, but they changed color. You know what I'm talking about? They're like oh, that orange-ish. I think and so, shit yeah. That, that, yeah, you know, I know what you're talking about. You buy the dishes at fucking Target and shit that do that. Right, you know? yeah. But his shoes did this shit. You know what I'm saying? Right, yeah. And man, oh man, he loved, like, dog, them <laughs> shoes were a shit. They were like $120. He never paid that for shoes in his fucking life ever even thought about it. You know, this is a yeah. good pair of boots. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the fuck. Mm-hmm. So fuck it. Duh, he was in love with his shoes, and all he did was suck these shoes his dick. You know what I'm saying? Just, mm. my shoes. Do, 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 do. Yeah. And then we were out one night. We were, like, walking, and the police stopped us. He was like, hey, hold on, guys. We are like, oh, fuck. 
love them shoes. We're like, no! Because his head just went, Pow! you know what I'm saying? We're like, fuck! <laughs> so he was just, jo- man, he loved these shoes so much. We, we were like, we started getting fucking mad at the shoes. You know what I'm saying? We're like, man, fuck those shoes. You know, he rocked that shit for real. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He's just getting all these ends, but he's fucking stupid. I thought they were the ugliest fucking things I ever saw. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. They were so fucking nasty. I'm just like, fuck. So me, me and fucking uh, Too Tough Tony, <laughs> he was on the road with us too. We're like, yo, fuck those shoes. We're going to kidnap his goddamn shoes. So we fucking kidnapped the shoes. It was at nighttime, of course. You know what I'm saying? We snatched his shoes up, and we're like, okay, we're going to leave one of those sweet ass, cut the paper out, write some notes. You know what I'm saying? We're like, yo, you got to do this or whatever. The shoes get it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Man, have you ever tried making one of those fucking notes? All right. Oh, the cutouts. The Holy cutouts. shit, man. Yeah. We were up till six in the fucking morning. It was like five yeah. pages long. You got to cut <laughs> out each letter. If you want to yeah. say anything real, you yeah. know what I'm saying? Like, we got your shoes, motherfucker. Right, right, you ain't right. going to see him again until whatever happened. It was like fucking, yeah. like, it was like five pages long. <laughs> it, dog, it took us all fucking night. We we're like, God, this sucks. So finally, we got it. You know what I'm saying? And we put it in G-Man's bunker. However the fuck we got it to him. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And um, so he reads it. He's like, fuck. So he had to wear his motorcycle boots. And, and the ransom note, the deal was, if he was to get his shoes back, he had to, we had this chicken suit with us. And uh, he, we were like, you got to wear this chicken suit for a full fucking day. From, more, from when you wake up to when you go to sleep. I think we had a show that night and everything. Yeah. We were like, you got to wear this fucking chicken suit. It's the only way <laughs> you're getting these shoes suit. back. Otherwise, we're going to burn them. Right. <laughs> they're, they're, they're done. You know what I'm right. saying? Back to your fucking motorcycle boots, bro. Right. Yeah. <laughs> no more of these fucking shoes for you. Yeah. So, so he was bugging, though. You know what I'm saying? He was like, oh, man, oh, man. So yeah. we were like, suit up. <laughs> so he did. You know what I'm saying? So he suited good. up. And we were like, all right. So it, it boiled down to it. So we were, like, we were just like, you know what? Just wear it out. To, we're going to get some snacks. You just got to wear it out to there. Because he was being a bitch or whatever the fuck the right. deal was. You know what I'm saying? G-Man's not a bitch. He's a cool dude. Right, he was being yeah, a bitch yeah. about that situation. Right. Yeah. And uh, so we were like, all right, fine. You just got to wear it. We're going to Perkins or whatever the fuck was around. Mm-hmm. You wear it to there. So we get into the fucking DeVille. <laughs> <laughs> Mashed in that bitch, dog. There's four right. motherfuckers up front. <laughs> right. And there's like six in the back. We're just fucking <laughs> in there. And G-Man's just in the yeah. mix in a fucking chicken suit. <laughs> <laughs> like a bunch of fucking grown right, ass right. like we're talking about tall ass fucking thugs right. in a fucking white pearl white deville right, <laughs> there's right, just a right. chicken in the mix a chicken. <laughs> so we're going to perkins okay. and we get fucking pulled over you know, I'm, I'm just guessing because we're so many people full grown men oh, in a yeah, car is just kind of yeah. fishy you know and uh so the cop comes around he's looking in and he's like He's like, you know, I pulled you over. And we like, honestly, didn't know. We were like, we're just going to get something to eat to do. And it turns out, he didn't even bring up G-Man being in a chicken suit. That didn't even come out of the cop. The cop <laughs> does, just didn't just even know, acknowledge just it. just know so. There's yeah. mad dudes in the car, one in a chicken suit. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't even bring none of that up. He was just like, well, I pulled you over because the driver, who was Joe, he was like, uh, match the description of a murderer that we're looking for right now. <laughs> <laughs> And we thought it might have been him, so we pulled you guys over. Right. But clearly it's not, so you guys can go. We're just like looking at G Man like <laughs> All right. <laughs> so what, nothing what happened. What do you think he was gonna do? What what? Uh, what, what, what? Be like, yo, what's up with the chicken at least? Something he didn't even fucking bring he it up. Didn't care. No, I right. guess not. He was looking for a murderer, not a chicken. Yeah. <laughs> so we get the Perkins and we thought it was all funny because you ordered like chicken soup and some chicken tenders. Right. <laughs> like, ate that shit. But it was did funny. He get his shoes him. back. He did. Yeah. He did get his shoes back, but it was yeah. stale. I didn't want to give him back to him, but he did honor right. his end of the deal and he got he got the shoes back. So yeah, that was my little switch up story that from uh, fighting. That was cool. That, like, that was that was that was the uh the, the transition story. I like thinking about G Man in a chicken suit. That's oh, dog, I got I pictures think. of that too. That shit was funny as hell. Right. Right. Like G Man, G Man used to bring endless fucking flavor on the road when we'd be out there. Man, we got some like really interesting people on the road with us. We used to oh, yeah. bring people all the time. We like, brought like Sabu for like, no reason. Like we had big big hand swallow hill. Yeah, like, he was like six fifty seven hundred. Just pounds. to sit on stage and just do nothing. And he would just, sit for a the spectacle. stage, you know, yeah, and just, just be like a spectacle, you know? Yeah, right. Yeah. And uh, we used to bring him on the road and what a trip that was bringing him on the road because oh, like was, you, just, just, you don't see the side of somebody that just, size. Yeah, you don't know what the life yeah. is like. And but, then when you yeah, bring you him see, on the road, you see shit that they don't want you to see. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Because oh, you're yeah. with them all the time. Yeah. You know, he couldn't fit in the bathrooms. Yeah, you know, and then like it was all kinds of shit. Yeah, it was just But I'll never forget we were wrestling in the hallway, wrestling each other, fucking around. And we stuffed him in a bunk. Like, we stuffed him in the middle bunk. bunk. In the middle bunk. Tom Dove was under him. And we were underneath him 
fucking with Top Dub, like Dub scoot over, you know, getting in, you know, we used to do that climbing yeah. each other's bunks all the time. <laughs> yeah. Bunk Haystack was up above us. And then we all got and out. And I'm we, like, we man, were this like, ain't funny. We were, we're like, like, Tom, you need it. You can't somebody sleep. Somebody his size ain't yeah. supposed to be in that bunk. Dog, no yeah, shit. Yeah. He had to be, bend 700 pounds. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he yeah. fucking somehow melted into this fucking bunk. It was the he middle bunk. He took up every like, square Burr. inch of the bunk. It was yeah, like we yeah. had like ninja men <laughs> tuck yeah, him in yeah, some. Yeah. And then Dub, Tom Dub's skinny ass was just in the bunk under him. <laughs> Speaking of Dub, come <laughs> here for a minute. Die! Rudy, come here for a minute. Uh-oh. I gotta yeah. clear something up, okay, Juggalos? I got, no, I got no argument. With, I got no argument with a friend of mine, all right? And uh, sit down between the them. argument reached a point where, oh, you know, it's some pretty mean things being said. You know, what I'm saying about each other's character. You know, it's all over text. And it's a really ugly situation. But this person said something. He said, "Yeah, well, the other night, you actually called Rudy into the fucking um, onto the show, and you you belittled him and compared him to Tom Dub and said all kinds of Rudy." Awful things about Rudy, and just so you know, all of us were out there cringing. It was most, one of the most evil things we ever saw. <laughs> Check this out for a minute. First of all, this is Rudy. I fucking love Rudy. All right, Rudy's our friend. He's our trusted employee. We we'll fucking take a bat to somebody's face for this man. All right, and if anybody understands our humor, this man understands our fucking humor. And to that ninja who said that stuff about us, and anybody else that thought we were serious. About what we when we're clowning on Rudy, like we really feel that way about him or something. Well, Tom Dub set the bar for your job so high. That that <laughs> that, that 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 humor like that. Yeah. That for you to think we were serious shows what you already think of us, and that's fucked up. How, who could be like that in real yeah, life? Yeah, right. You know what I mean? Like meanness. How can you even think? Come out here so we can fuck you up. How do you even think we meant that shit? Like, for real. Yeah, like, yeah. What, who the fuck do you think we are to even think that? Anybody out there watching that might have thought our clowning on Rudy was real when all we're doing is laughing and smiling, including him. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. yeah it's, he did and I realized that like, when you're dealing with the masses and you're talking to like a wide variety of people, mm. there probably are people out there that think we're being for real. No, none of that was for real. I, I don't know how anybody could think that, though. Yeah, But just... you already got to think very low of us to yeah. think that could be real. Right. We love Rudy. And right, I'll take a hike, Rudy. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Now! now. <laughs> Rudy, by the way, keep it real. You know we don't accept no sort of fucking ass kissing going on. Keep it real. Did you think we were serious? Absolutely not. Now, what did he say, Rob? What's that? What was his answer? Because he don't have. He just said absolutely not. He said absolutely not. That's right. Absolutely not. Absolutely. All right. We love Rudy. We fucking cherish Rudy. All right. He's been here how long now? Uh, Four years. Four years. Rudy moved to Detroit. We didn't even know him. He moved to Detroit to get a job with Psychopathic Records. That was his dream, and he's not only doing it, schooling it. He's an achiever, an accomplisher of his dreams, all right? And we respect him for that, and we love him for the hard work he puts in. And to think we're serious, talk like that about anybody and be serious, man, fuck you for assuming we're like that. Anybody that could ever fall for that and think we're for real when we're clowning on him like that. You know, people, Duly noted. Yeah, if somebody's not in, like, like you know, if, if people don't, they obviously aren't like following or know anything about juggalo culture, you know what I'm saying? If they if they misinterpret that. Especially you know. <laughs> if that person you know. has been so closely around us for a great number of years and their bitch ass never even went to the march. That's all I got to say. All right, anyway. Okay, let's, so let's get back on. to the story. Yeah, right. <laughs> move on. Yeah, we, I agree. we definitely need to These move are road stories. Right. I had to say that because I love Rudy. I don't want nobody thinking. I don't. I, nobody thought that, though. That's, that's all I'm saying. Right. You didn't read the text. One person. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. One person. And the way he worded it, Rob, he was like, okay. I didn't even realize it until my friends pointed it out. Yeah, don't get One your feelings hurt over nothing. Yeah, they're, they're, the friends, you know, non juggalos too, so they, they don't know what's going on. <laughs> all right, so is it my turn to tell a story? Yeah. Yes, it is. Okay. I got a quick, quick story. This is pretty wild. There's a, there's a place in um, Texas where. They have a, what's called a checkpoint, okay, where they check your 
your uh, vehicles for drugs and shit. They don't always, but in the, mo- the, the it's called like the agriculture stop because they say they're checking for like. No, there, like this is my point. There is a place where yeah. they always. Oh, okay, do. yeah, the drivers yeah, okay. always know the. Well, There's get no it. way around yeah. it. Yeah. But you, to get around it, you have to take a 500 mile yeah. detour. And a lot of times we've done that. We're talking about this place that's so remote that you either take that highway. And it's near Mexico and Texas, so there's like, you know, they're worried about the border. So they search every vehicle uh, for drugs or whatever, d- weapons, whatever, uh, illegal aliens, whatever. Yeah. And um, the only way around it is a 500 mile out of the way, you know, drive. So we've been through that checkpoint several times. The bus driver would be like, everybody hey, put you know, your weed on the bus. Is there any weed on, on the truck? On the bus, you know, there's a checkpoint coming up. Oh, you shit on the truck. Oh, you shit on the truck. We can't avoid it. And we have avoided it before. Yeah, oh, yeah. We had took the five hundred. Yeah, we we are. Because mm-hmm. everybody's well, got I mean, well, We're always sleeping when we go through. I'd, I'd like, I'd like rarely. I would like one time. We, I remember going through it because so at night time. We're, we're all like, no, nobody's got anything legal. We're good. It was like the crack ass crack at dawn when we when we apparently arrived. I had this was crazy. I had my family with me, my my uh, wife at the time, who's now like my best friend, and my kids were with us. The bus, everybody, you know what I'm saying? We, 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 I remember the sun was coming up. It's bitterly cold yeah. when the sun is just coming up. They woke us up, kicked us all off the bus. Yeah. Right? Everybody had to stand on the side of the bus, shorts, no shoes, freezing. My daughter's literally in my ear like, when can we go back in? When can we go back in? I was starting to become really livid. You know what I mean? Because they're just tearing the bus up. And you're just waiting, and my kids are cold. You know what I mean? And I'm like, this is some bullshit, you know? Suddenly, the cops come out of the, the fucking bus with a, a, not even a sandwich bag, but like a industrial sandwich bag. Like a freezer bag. Like a fucking freezer bag, right? <laughs> Full of white pills. He, <laughs> the cop walked out the bus with a sack, a pillowcase looking bag. Yeah. Full of white pills. Wow. And we're all just like, Holy shit! The mother load. <laughs> right. Who's fucked? You know. Right. And Corp's like, I am. You know. Oh, it was it was our was friend that? Corp, oh. who's who's a pro wrestler and um, uh, ex friend. Ex friend, yeah. <laughs> and he um he had a gigantic sack of pills. Right. We're like thinking, Corp, we'll never see you again. Right. Like that's a fucking pretty hefty charge. Right. Like right. that amount. Yeah. And. They produced it out of nowhere. None of us knew that that was on there. Right. And we're just like, holy fuck. And I got butterflies in my stomach for Corp. Like, yeah. we couldn't get him on if we wanted to. You know what I mean? Right. Who, who knew? Who to thunk it, you know? So they take Corp away, and we're waiting there just to get word he's arrested or whatever, you know? We're waiting there. We're waiting there. About 20 minutes goes by. Corp comes walking on the bus. We're like, what happened? He's like, they let me go. And we're like, that giant freezer bag with the pills? How? And according to Corp, he's like, I just showed him my forehead. Corp is a notorious liar, though. I showed him all my scars. I explained to them that I'm a deathmatch wrestler and that I need those to get by. And they let me go. Did Did they they get the And he pulls the bag out. They let him have it, keep it? They let him go what? with the big ass bag. <laughs> oh, shit. Not only was I, I mean, we were two separate buses because I, I was not there for that story. I didn't My forehead was like, right. my wig crawled four inches back. <laughs> right, yeah. I could not believe what the fuck? they let him go with the shit. Yeah, that's right. crazy. That's insane, yeah, that's man. Crazy. Yo, that was his like one re- redemption, yeah. like life chance to turn his shit around I mean, right there. his entire yeah. life that a dog would have changed that moment yeah know? that's what i'm saying that was his one redemption that turned his fucking life around yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying like yeah, dog that was call, like an intervention know. of a Learn. divine he had power. no script you know what i'm saying a fucking sack of fucking man yeah that was and he kept fucking around after that and they didn't even that. That. take him that's insane insane i'll never forget that that's see some crazy, shit like that man. happened to me in mexico before like you know say they took me in a substation this for being a gringo, I guess, and strip search me, and like you know, over there in the in like some of the pharmacies, you could just buy like you know, like, it's yeah. like street prices for pills over there. This is so long ago too. I think Ash was uh, with me, and uh, I had a bunch of stuff in the end of my my shoe. You know what I'm saying? And so they, they took everything off, but my underwear's, you know, and I put them up on the counter, whatever the fuck. 
But they didn't even give a shit. All they wanted was money. They took my $35, however much I had. You know what I'm saying? Was, was, before I could even say peace, they were already gone. I was just by myself. Oh, yeah. Little shack That's in the middle of a boulevard in Yeah. You know what I'm saying? saying? I'm like, oh shit. I just fucking put my shit on and fucking broke for the border, man. But yeah, that's crazy that they let his ass go. Oh, Holy fuck, so. man. Wow. This is a trip, man. Wow. That's um, crazy. Corp got lucky on that one. Then I got another the small luckiest. story before we move on. Um, one time we were on the East Coast, and we're all in there. You know, a lot of shit happens at Denny's, you know? Oh, God. Because they're man. the only motherfuckers open late at night. Well, now it's Waffle House. And it's also, you know, the, the bar is closed. About the time we get out of a venue... Or even the bus hits. Yeah, you know? by the time you're, usually, you're, uh, you're on the road, you're leaving the town, you know what I'm saying? It's usually around 2, though. Yeah, it's like 2, 2.30. Yeah, because usually bus call is like 2 when the bar is closed. Yeah, unless you stand to the morning, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so so you, you always go to a restaurant at 2.30, yeah, right always. when all the drunks come out of the right. bars, yeah, you know? Yeah, sucks. So there's been a lot of weird situations that have happened at, at these Denny's late at night. One time, the lady was like, we somebody representing us asked the lady, Hey, do you mind if we sit in the closed section? Because, you know, our bus is wrapped out there. It says the name of our band. All the bar, all the bar kids are going to be coming. We don't feel like dealing with it. Can we, you mind if we sit in the closed section? And she was like, sure, I'm a, I got you guys covered. You don't have to worry about that. I totally understand. So she let us sit in the area that was closed, you know? We're all sitting in there, and we have a big peaceful dinner, at la- fun and laughs and everything. Suddenly, the lady comes around the corner, and she's got in her hands... A stack of fucking papers, mm. right? And she's like, autograph time, just like that. <laughs> See, I, I don't right? This one either. She's like, autograph yeah, time, right. and she put them on the table. With the whole point, why it was a big ass stack of papers. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, and we're like, hold on, this is the very reason we asked you if we could sit in the close section. <laughs> and the lady exploded. Right, okay. Like, there was no other conversation I'm missing. Right, yeah. Right. I know Billy remembers this. <laughs> the lady was like, well, if you don't like your fucking job, why don't you find another one? You know what I mean? <laughs> and she just exploded. Right, okay. And we're like, this is crazy. <laughs> and and that's all I remember. I don't remember what we did, how we handled it. Right. I just remember the lady shaking. And, right. like, we weren't even a dick to her. Right, yeah, yeah. And it was such a bizarre moment. Because now you made her look bad. She's over there like, oh, yeah, I can get it for you. I, right, what I yeah. think, though, what, what I think is I think she exploded because she was embarrassed. Yeah. Because she, she didn't realize she told what the fuck she was doing. Yeah. Right. And so I pointed it out. I'm like, that's she's why. She's probably crazy. You know we mean? wanted to sit in the area that's closed. Yeah. So we didn't have to deal with that. And she just was like, and I just brought it to him. And then she felt dumb. So she unleashed. I mean, that's my speculation. Sure. Yeah. No doubt. Okay. But anyway, the other the other last of my story, because I know we're probably out of time. The last of my story was we were at a Denny's one time, and I remember looking at all these kids in the Denny's, and they were um they looked like Grateful Dead followers. You know, like um hippies. They looked like hippies, but they were something else. Fish you, heads. No, they weren't fish heads. They were like is that what they're called? Fish they heads? were squatters. Okay, it's a bunch of fucking okay, squatters. I remember looking at... In, in the, in the, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't know what a squatter was. And the people are telling me it's people that live in like a pack yeah. and they choose to be mm-hmm. homeless. Right, yeah. And then they'll they like, they enjoy the living right. of being homeless. So they're not actually homeless. They go home to their families. But they choose... It's young people. Yeah. And they choose to be squatters. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I remember looking at them and one of the girls... It's always a girl... You know what I mean? One of the girls was fucking hot beneath her squattiness. I could see the hotness in her, you know? Beneath all the filth. And I remember having a fantasy like, man, it'd be so dope to have that girl and, and give her all kinds of clothes and shit. I know she don't it's have that. It's not a pretty woman. Or... But then I'm like, she's not even really probably like that. Probably has rich parents. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But I just thought she was really beautiful. So anyway, it has nothing to do with nothing. So then we all got up to leave, right? <laughs> what? Uh, no, 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 go ahead. We got up to leave. And we heard a commotion break out behind us. Mm -hmm. And we're like, huh? We heard tables and chairs and everything, movement. Those fucking squatters, probably about 15 of them, the minute our huge crew got up to leave, they jumped up and started eating off our plates. (laughs) It was the craziest sight I've ever seen. They're just scarfing the shit down, you know what I mean? Before the waitress came and took them. Right, okay. (laughs) And they're doing this for the style of it. 
Right. Is what they were telling right. me. They could have just went to their mom's house and got some snacks. But they haven't been home in months because right. they, they're doing this thing. They're like, right. they're doing yeah. it, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And it was just very interesting, you know? Mind. And I guess we saw like an old ass bus outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? like some old school bus transformers. Yeah, and they're all shit. traveling in that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I thought that might be fun. You know what I mean? It would be fun, like that fucking hungry. <laughs> yo, yeah, that, that's where I draw the line. Be like, yo, but I, are they? I'm, I'm, with, I'm with traveling, but I'm bringing this fucking knot with me. But <laughs> are they that hungry, though? Or was it just the game? Yeah, maybe. You know, you know what I'm saying? saying? Right, like, yeah. like, they're sitting there, they order like a piece of toast between the 12 of them. You know <laughs> right. what I mean? And they're waiting for somebody to get up. And it's like, is it. Right. You yeah, get yeah. it? Is it real or is it the style? Yeah. Because, so, sure. yeah. well, regardless, that's where I'll draw the line. <laughs> I'll be like, yeah, I'm not eating that shit, man. Sorry. Right, no doubt. Man, I got one more thing I want to tell. Okay, go ahead. It, it's not a road story, though. <laughs> well, but but it's one of the coolest the stories I've ever fucking heard in my life. It's very, very well, this short. This probably shut the show out, but I don't I don't give a shit. Go ahead. I don't want to be the last one. I want somebody else to do it. But this is this is what I'm this is all I gotta say. One time me and Joey were at That'd be me. the gathering doing a meet and greet. Mm -hmm. And this man, this like fucking man, like like 50-year-old man comes up and he's like I don't remember where the gathering was, somewhere in the Midwest. But he was like, I walked all the way oh, here from Portland. No, that was like, I think that was in Oklahoma City. He's like, I walked yeah. all the way here from Portland. I, I'm not, and we're like, how far we're is like, that? Shut up, and he's like, a thousand miles. Yeah. And we're like, shut the, the fuck, fuck out of here. You know what I'm saying? You ain't got a lie to kick it. Right, right. What do you want to sign? You ain't got a lie to kick it. And he's laughing. And he's like, for real. And we're like, yeah, you just walked here. Exaggeration, exaggeration. Mm -hmm. The craziest thing in my yeah, life. I'll never yeah, this forget was, this. This was fucking. And it's it doesn't make any sense. Yeah, dog, I didn't know what to think. I'm just. We're just like whatever, whatever. He walks away. You don't know the, know the story. Yeah, yeah. No. You know I the remember, story. I remember it. I don't know the. He I walks away, man. And seen, I happened to glance down his feet. At the same time, I looked, dog. It looked like he was standing on a nuclear bomb when it went off. His feet were <laughs> black. They looked like. They looked like. Fucking, they fucking. There was yeah. like. The farther up, like the bottom of his. Pants were shredded. Yeah, straight up. His <laughs> shoes were non-existent on the bottom, just yeah. the top. No, they looked like there was they, no the barefoot on the bottom. They looked like old the front ass, was still. They looked like old ass like, loaves yeah, of yeah, bread. Yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I'm saying? They're like, like swollen. It looked and, like he was standing on a bomb and it went off. Yeah, like it was shredded. It was fucking and something to see, dog. He had jeans on and they were just destroyed yeah, at the bottom. Shit, dog. And it looked like he just walked a thousand miles. <laughs> right. If, if wow. you see somebody's feet that walk a thousand miles, you expect them to look exactly like that. And he was right. limping on both legs when he walked away. And we were just like, he's for real. <laughs> it was the craziest thing. I never saw that guy again no, me at the gathering. No. Why did he pick the gathering to come to? No, I think that was the closest one to him because it was in Oklahoma City as opposed to Ohio. I mean, like, who the fuck would right, do that? Right, yeah. Yeah, he's just like, you know, I'm going to walk to that. It just, you <laughs> The best even, part is you can link up with somebody and get a ride if you network on the fucking, right. on the internet. You, you know couldn't even fake this though, Rob. Like, yeah, he, a he, Hollywood he, makeup department could not make the shit looked like this. Yeah, that, that was, it was definitely, so authentic. There was a thousand miles on them feet, no question. It just was insane. It looked <laughs> no like he question. was kicking it like through he was peeling out dust, out of through snow. <laughs> right. You know, like, like yeah. Yeah. what was he even doing to destroy his legs like that? Just walking. Walking, dog. I know. Who knew walking would do that? And, to you you know, and it was just one of the most incredible things I've ever saw. I'll never forget that. Right. Like, That's when he right. walked away, that sight. Yeah. I'll never forget it. And he just wasn't even selling it. He just turned around, laughed, and walked out. <laughs> right, because he's like, I ain't got nothing to prove. Look at my fucking feet, guy. See? <laughs> Unreal, man. Damn. Yikes. Uh, what, what, what time we got? It's uh, 12.23. Oh, shit. Okay. Yeah. I got more stories. You guys are out? I got no. No, I got a fucking whole shit ton of stories. Well, go ahead. Let's go run them around. Well, I mean, I, I wanted to talk, like, this could be a whole fucking other tangent, though, like, but I wanted to talk about, like, the, you know, the girls, basically, like the whole thing of it, like like that needs to be a special, around. man. We need to actually <laughs> do be, a special a about thing. love on the yeah, road. It's yeah. such an interesting topic. But I, I just think it's a it's a big part of the road. You know what I'm saying? I like, just know. Well, here, here goes, I just know every well, girl I got life. with in my life on right. the road. I fucking love them. I mm. care for them. I I I pray to God. The ones from 20 years ago. I pray to God that they are sitting there. And when it ever crosses their mind, even if once a year, once every five years, when they're sitting there, you know, making dinner or something, the kids are everywhere, the husband, mm -hmm. you know, and they might look back at those days when they got with 
they got it from ICP, <laughs> and I want her to smile. Right. I don't want it to be a regret. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, I don't yeah, want yeah. to be anybody's regret, Rob. Sure, like yeah. it's a, such a fucking nightmare to be yeah. anybody's regret. Like why yeah. are we had fun, man? You know, yeah, I'm giving sure. no disease. Like what are you regretting? You know what I mean? Right. Like I don't want any. Like I'm so fucking thankful. And when I hear somebody say something like. I was so young and dumb back then. Like, <laughs> oh, so you regret it? Like, it was a mistake right. to you? Yeah. Like, why, what's wrong with that? Like, we, we, we met, we hooked up. It was awesome. What the fuck is wrong with that? Right. You know? And, and I love them all. And I did my best to take care of them. I never abandoned nobody. I, it was one time. <laughs> we were shooting Big Money Rustlers. Remember the hottie, super, oh, God, super, yeah. super hottie from Denver? Mm-hmm. We flew the hottie out. I was with her now. Joe used to be with her. I was with her at this point. Mm. Flew her out to New York. We had Bubba. What was his name? Uh, Bubba Dub. Yeah, Bubba was, Dub. Yeah. The guy working at the, at the movie. Bubba Dub, we like take them shopping to get them what they want. Bubba Dub came back and was like, I got to tell you something. And I was like, what's up? And he's like, man, your girl was talking big shit. I'm like, what'd she say? She was just talking about how she's not attracted to you and she wishes she was here with somebody else. <laughs> and I got my feelings hurt. You know what I mean? Sure. I was like, she said all that? He was like, and then some, bro. And I was just like, right in front of you? And he's like, she didn't know I worked for you like this. She thought I worked for the movie. <laughs> so <laughs> we drove them to the airport the next day. And this is in New York. We drove them to the airport. And right when they got out and got their bags out of the car, we like, have a safe flight home. Because you ain't got no flight on us, bitch. Ah! We took off. <laughs> we didn't have a ticket for her. We yeah. drove her up with nothing at the yeah, airport. Yeah, Only yeah. time I've ever done this in my life, right? Yeah, right. We went directly back to the hotel. We didn't stop anywhere. Directly back to the hotel. When we got back to the hotel, they were waiting for us. <laughs> At the hotel? Yes! It was like some cartoon oh, shit. It was like some cartoon <laughs> shit. We're like... <laughs> they were waiting for us. Oh, shit, there goes your Muda. I just now realized. Yeah. Is that the one oh, there it is. Okay. And she was like, my dad's in a biker gang. He's going to fuck you up, you know. If you if you leave me out here, we ended up buying him plane tickets to send him home. <laughs> All right, we, oh, he man. means him. Not because right. we were scared. Because <laughs> she was in our face, you know. Right, yeah. And, I, man, and, 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 man, I just, I didn't have it in me to do that anyway. It was like, I would have regretted it. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? Even though she did that whole shit, we've never been nobody. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't want no women... Regretting their time with us. I want it to be an awesome experience. All right. Well, now I'm going to swing this right quick to one of the more dangerous downfalls of the road. The bus accident I was in. Oh, okay. Bum, bum, bum. A lot of fucking people die in bus accidents. And a lot of people on the road, wrestlers and musicians yeah. die. Yeah. Yeah. We, 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 had, we had bus drivers that fall asleep. Yeah, well, hear, this bus driver fell asleep. You, you would hear the, the rumble strips. Right. Well, yeah. we didn't. We you would I, see the motherfucker. Go I ahead. mean, like every like ten minutes, you're everyone's waking up in the buck. Like, oh, yeah, shit. but this one we didn't hear nothing, man. I, I, I don't, I, I don't know. You, you must have been on a different bus. I, do you remember that happening? Mm-mm. That old ass drive we had. I, I remember 100 percent on the bus with me and Rai Rai. Thousand percent, I remember. Remember what happened to Rai Rai, man? I, he lives in L.A. Last time I seen him, he was doing pretty good for himself. Man, that's a long time ago. You don't know how many years have gone by. Yeah, fair enough. I, I mean, I seen him probably. Yeah, it was probably. Shit, at least he probably became years. an adult movie like entertainer. Years. Oh, last time I seen him was when we went to that wrestling convention in LA. Right, like a good 12 years ago. Yeah, long ass time ago. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, so fucking, um, so whatever. Uh, it was like near the end of a tour and we had fired our driver for some reason or another and it was just a replacement guy. This motherfucker must have been 90 years old. Right. <laughs> old as shit. You know what I'm saying? And we were nervous the whole time. We're like, yo, why did this such an old driver? But we used to fire so many fucking drivers yes, that they just throw us whoever the fuck. I like, love that about us. I've always loved that about he's us. Gonna, we're going to fire We got the notorious oh, bad yeah, they, they fucking bus, bus drivers, drivers hated yeah. us for firing fuck drivers. These drivers. But we just wouldn't put up with their shit is all, you know, because bus yeah. drivers, once you let them, once you start talking to them and getting to know them, right, they'll they start get, taking advantage of you. There's never been a more true statement ever. They'll, they'll right. start taking advantage of you because they think right. you're friends now. They don't think that you're their employer. So they'll, they'll, right. you just come out the bus at their show. They'll be like lounging, just watching TV. They just got or their, if you want to stop at a Walmart right. every night and they complain yeah, about it, it's like, bitch, or, you can you go all all they, They'll be like, oh, you guys want to not smoke weed back there? He's like, right. the fuck, you know how much I'm paying for this goddamn bitch, bus? Bitch. I'm paying uh, crazy right. money for this shit. All, Fuck all, you and drive. All of a sudden, you, they got their girl on the bus. Yeah, straight up. Right. You know, so right, some right. bitch, some <laughs> bitch is sitting up in the fucking jump chair. You know, you're like, who is this? Oh, no, she's not even that. She's sitting back with you guys. <laughs> right. Like, 
<laughs> Whose girl is this? Oh, like, oh, you man. That's mine. Motherfucker, you with me. Be sleeping in a fucking junk bunk. You're like, get it. That's uh, mother- what the fuck is? I don't know this guy. Or he comes back and he's right. digging through your snacks. Right. Yeah. So the, yeah. They're always going, like, going through your shit. Quit. Yeah, right. Yeah, so if, 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 if we used to fire him, I mean, nowadays, you know, we're just like, yo, I didn't want to know this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? I'll say what up to him, all that shit. I don't want to be his friend because they got to actually, we pull the straight up asshole. Man. Yeah, straight up. We got to tell our guy to tell them, curtain. don't talk to the band. Don't say that in the band under any circumstances because we don't like it. You know, I'll tell you why. Because we're in that, that's our house. That's right. And that's that's a, our house. That, that, that's yeah. one thing I was going to say about when we were talking about fighting earlier is, is when you're chilling in your bus and somebody you don't know just walks into your fucking bus, you're automatically getting your ass stomped like you ain't never had a stomp. That, but picture, that, sit, sit, picture sit in your living room watching TV and some yeah. motherfucker just walks in your door. Sure. Yo, this is a nice ass house, dog. This is, you live up in here? Oh, yeah. this is Dope. <laughs> Bitch, it's my house. This Same thing with a bus. You're, you're living in that right? bus for months. That's your house, and everybody around you, you picked yourself. You fucking chose who's going to ride with you, right. right? You don't have any say over the bus driver. Exactly. So when he's back there shooting the shit, right. it's like, motherfucker, what are you doing drinking your coffee back here talking to us right. every morning? They got a coffee machine up in there. I'm like, get, get the fuck out of here. We don't know get you. Get that off here. Put in the bay. I want a fucking <laughs> toaster up here. They ended up rooting for his fucking coffee we machine. We don't know you. I'm out right. here scratching my ass, waking up, no shirt. Right. I don't need you on this bus. Right. Just because right. you're driving means you got access to all that. Get the fuck out of here. Right. Yeah. So anyhow... So so they sent us this old fucking guy, you know what I'm saying? We were like on the like last week stretch or some shit. This guy was so crusty and old, dog. I was just like, holy fuck, how's this guy even got a job, you know? And uh so whatever. So like we leave the venue that night or wherever we left the hotel. And uh everybody went to bed, you know, it was mad late. I mean, for everybody to be in bed on the bus, it's gotta be like five in the morning, you know what I'm saying? People just be staying up like crazy. And uh sunlight is usually the indicator. Yeah, sunlight is usually motherfuckers like, oh goddamn, sun's up, time to go to bed. But uh mm-hmm. So anyhow, so so everybody's sleeping, you know what I'm saying? All of a sudden, I just hear the biggest fucking crash I've ever heard. Boom! And I'm fucking marinating on the floor in the hallway in the bus with fucking piles of luggage on top of me. You know what I'm saying? Oh, I'm just like, what the fuck? Oh, you know? Shit. It felt like it felt like uh and I was in I was in the fucking top bunk. And it felt like somebody like tied ropes around my ankles, my knees, my hips, my waist, and my shoulders, and just five of the muscularest guys ever at once. We were like, one. Two, three, ha! <laughs> it just yoked me out. You know, that's what it felt like. And like, I'm just like, what the fuck? And it's so all like fucking ninja out and get out. And it's like pitch black in the hallway. The lights aren't working, nothing. And I go to hit the fucking button to open the door and it won't open. It's jammed shut. You that's know? when I panic. I hate those electric doors. Yeah, I, I, yeah. I yeah. Panic. And then I just hear some muffled talking and shit. I'm like, what the fuck? And I was standing on top of the luggage. Rai Rai was still up on the luggage. You know? oh, shit. So I'm like, what the fuck? So I dug them out. And then I can't remember what, like, everybody that was on the other side of the bus, even on the other side of the bus, mm-hmm. didn't even wake up. <laughs> it was oh, crazy. Because right, okay. everybody on this side yeah. just like, went, like a, boom! Like a, you know what I'm saying? Swung, like, what happened was, yeah, and so we had to, like, fucking grab the door and push it open because the bus like, got not crooked. Yeah. So the door was, like, fucking jammed, you know? And uh, so finally we just fucking pushed it open. You know, we're freaking the fuck out, you know? It was crazy. You know, motherfuckers die from bus accidents. They're yeah. dangerous as shit. You know, no safety belts. It's like aluminum foil sides. You know, it, it's crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, so right when I open it up, I notice, I, I, you know, the, the front lounge is right here and the curtain's open so you can see right out the front window. It's pitch black in the bus. You can see the headlights. All you can see in the middle of the bus is the dotted line of the freeway, like from the lane. So he's right in the middle of two fucking lanes, shit. stopped in the middle of a two-lane highway. You know what I'm saying? Freeway. Mm-hmm. So we're like, what the fuck? So like we ninja off and we look and he's just walking around like a fucking aimless zombie. Okay, right. Just ninja around. We're like, what the fuck is going on? And I can't remember how the fuck somebody like jumped in and just like grabbed him and jumped in and like pulled the bus off to the side and shit. Mm. And then uh it still ran, you know? So like we got to the a, a hotel. Well, what did he hit? Uh he hit the fucking big fucking uh concrete mediums in the middle of the uh freeway. Oh, the oh, divider yeah. piece. Yeah. yeah. So he was doing like 80 oh, and fucking wow. he fell asleep. It was like, uh, boom, and hit right. that bitch. And oh, it went, okay. brrr, and brought him to a stop. Like, yeah. do, 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 do. you know, so when we hit the fucking medium is when everybody just got yoked out. It was like, sure, yeah. boom, you know, and everybody just got sucked out of their shit. You know what I'm saying? And right. uh, yeah, it was fucking crazy. You know, and I think about that today, how lucky we are we didn't fucking die. Yeah, you know? die right there, yeah. Because like I said, those fucking buses, dog, it's like the, the fucking metal, like the shell of it is so weak. You know, like fucking oh, right. aluminum foil, man. You can crunch them in. 
But yeah, we got the whole fucking side of the bus was just like gone. You know, it was just like yeah. dented in and scraped. But you I, know what? You didn't die. No, Come sure on. didn't. You know what I'm saying? You didn't fucked up. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. Exactly. Let's say you're talking about the Corvette. Yeah, you didn't but die. You didn't die. So, so, so what? Who gives a shit? <laughs> the only person that feels it still is the people that happened to. Right, you know? right. Yeah, yeah you might still be. Well, that's all right. Because Rob's going to come up with the bus story plus more on top of it. No, you might have. So I got the post traumatic stress. You might have post traumatic stress from it. You might have post traumatic stress. You might still have repeating nightmares. You'll be fine. Yeah. I, I just remember they, they were, uh, when we first started touring, they told us to sleep feet first. Yep, that's the feet, big rule. Yeah, and feet toward the front. Yeah. So if it gets in an accident, you don't you, break your head neck. doesn't fucking yep. you know, bang into the wall. Like mm-hmm. your feet will go first. Yeah. You, know you break I mean? your ankles. That's like number wall. one rule. Oh, everybody who's new on the bus always wants to lay with their head towards the front. You're like, hey, dog, you can't do that because right, you'll yeah, fucking yeah, die. Yeah, you'll fucking die if you do that. Yeah. yeah. I think we're good, man. I, I say we, uh, if, unless someone's got a short story or something. I got crazy amounts of stories. I, I got crazy stories. <laughs> yeah, too, I got crazy man. stories too. But we got to end. Why can't somewhere. we do one more round? Because we've been on here for three hours. <laughs> Motherfuckers want to go to bed. Right. <laughs> We're still talking. Right, this no, is a three-hour podcast, viewing, guy. Motherfuckers no, are one person's like right viewing it. Right. Well, we, we can't talk about talking. girls because that's a whole other. I mean, how, yeah, how many, we start going to that. No about. girls and no fun. And yeah, how we doing, Rudy? On the posts. The votes. How many votes? A hundred. Oh, wait. Come here, he man. Just, he said hundreds. He just that up. So oh, like hundreds? Bullshit. Like, are you, you, are you just oh, guessing? Man. Or did you actually count them? It's too many to count. Okay. Too too many, what he said, what did you count. say? 300? All right, so we'll, we'll count them. Yeah, tomorrow. Uh, we'll have tally, right? yeah, we're going to have the tally. We're going to have to We're gonna have to try to find the fucking story. Man, I ain't yeah. none of my fucking stories, man. Yeah, no, me, me either. Fuck. Yeah. You were telling mad stories. What are you talking about? <laughs> I've been telling mad stories. I couldn't even fucking get a word in, man. I was just sitting there like, we're talking a lot. <laughs> yeah, one after the other, rapid fire. Oh That's my God, I can't believe I'm hearing this. Coming from Rob in his fucking epic trilogies the other night. <laughs> <laughs> but you took over Rob's position tonight. Right. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe I don't know myself anymore. It's epic epic trilogies. Epic trilogies. <laughs> All right, no, those are some good-ass stories, though. Yeah. Me. We right, definitely cool. gotta do so, more podcasts, man, to do more fucking uh, dope ass shit. Like oh this. shit! When we come back on Wednesday, uh, we got Chris Hansen joining us. Oh wow. yeah, for the psychopathic Don shoot interview. Yes, he's bringing on my question asker. You know, and the thing is, we haven't had one of these fucking shoot interviews, to my knowledge, since two thousand and one at the gathering. We did one. It mm. was, I remember Alex was there. It was like me, Alex, and, and I think maybe. I don't even think Billy was there. I think it was just me and Alex. It was an official shoot? It was a, yeah, it was an official shoot interview. And that's when the, the story of the butterfly first got leaked. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Crazy. That story came out when, when, when Six Silver's card came out. Yeah, I know, but it first came out in the 2001, right? Yeah, right. just go ahead and... Yeah, I, remember I that. know, still. <laughs> but it was a shoot interview. I was like, I got a fucking answer. Right. I, we said it. All questions answered, you know? And, and yeah, it was, it was partially my story to tell, too, but I regret it. All right, anyway. So uh, that's so coming up this Wednesday? Yes. Yeah, and, yeah, the next. Two, a meager two days. Yeah. Two days. With yeah, tomorrow night, and then the next night. I consider that air. to be, besides Hollow Wicked, like, the yeah, biggest event. that's about event. to be that boy. Like, the biggest event. Because we're answering Like, when we first questions. laid this out, I was like, the psychopathic Don Sheen. I just want Juggalos to think about what they want to ask, because, man, we're yeah, really don't ask down corny to answer because any question. Straight up. So right. don't be like, what's your favorite song on Carnival Carnage? You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like, don't like, waste your fucking questions, If man, we ignore we're your question anything. all night, if we ignore your question all night. It's because it's dumb it's as fuck. It's because it sucks. Yeah. And we're not going to answer right now when we're coming back to Cleveland, all right? Right. Like, right. think of something good you want to ask us, you know? Like something juicy and fucking controversial. Right. Because we're about to spill the beans, man. Yes. So when we return psychopathic Don shoot interview. on and Wednesday. Billy's going to be doing the interview yes. with us. Yes. The psychopathic Don shoot interview. Get your questions ready. Until then, I'm Jump Steady. On behalf of all my homies chilling here Which is tonight. Which up as well? Yes. Mmm. We'll Man, I really don't get to tell time. a story about the girl who put the cocaine on her lips and blew me. Nah. Really? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's a wrap. It's a Sucks. Wrap next time. There's always the next time. That's the one thing. Now you, you guys know. got me all fucking insecure about how much I've been talking tonight. No, no, no. We, we were all getting our, we were all getting our talk. Joey's like, you were running your mouth, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I can lie to you. Man, you were as quiet as a church mouse, guy. <laughs> oh, my God. And for you guys, I'm telling you at home, man, you don't know how crazy it is in here, man. These guys went down old school, man. We've all had a great time. I'm learning so much 
from all this stuff, man. These and, and stories you need were it the tremendous. most. You need yeah, a lot of I, psychopathic I, I knowledge, do, brother. I do. I do. I'll be the first one. One on one. I, I do. <laughs> I do, so man. I do. He, he needs. He needs anything outside of the '90s. One on one. There you go. <laughs> this is true. And I'm getting my help, man. I'm soaking it in just like you guys are at home. Yeah. You so know, man. He's alone. He's like, fuck all that. New shit. Oh, oh man. <laughs> no, he get, hey, I move Manny a lot in the car, dog. If yeah. it's not from like from 1990 to 1995, it gets no play in his car, dog. <laughs> <laughs> he started, as far as he knew, that's just still the new <laughs> shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now somebody man. out there is going to be like, it was so cruel what they were saying about Manny. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> that is all, man. <laughs> Fucking asshole. Manny like that. That was the only thing that wicked my life. <laughs> I All love right. these guys, man. All right, um, hey, um, yeah, man, come with your good questions, man, because we're ready to tackle that shit, man. Word up. And uh, we'll we'll uh, try to get the song together, right? And yeah, we try to find it. And, and, and if we got 300 votes, we, we can probably, them. if we find it, we can probably play so it. We'll, 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 we'll know, we'll know Wednesday. We'll, we'll, we'll release the information Wednesday whether we got votes enough to put that in the package. Yeah, it's so bad. Man, I want to put all kinds of surprises on there. I was thinking like, you know, since it's, it's a free EP, basically it's a free EP, right? Like, yeah. like it comes with a ticket, but you mm-hmm. can't buy it separately, right? So we right. could throw songs on there that aren't ours and just, because we're giving it away. Yeah. So we could, we could throw, you know, you can't touch this on there. Right. Just like as a, yeah, a similar right. tonight. Like like yeah, oh, cuz we're cool not we're not we're not selling yeah. those, those Like like a, like a like a um a um soundtrack to the whole yeah, pod. Yeah. Like songs yeah. that we've talked oh, about yeah. and no, stuff. Yeah. Like yeah. throw them yeah. on the CD on the CD. Right. You know? yeah. So it's like 17 songs on it plus the ones we said you'd get, but you get all this bonus shit, you know? Yeah, right. No, that's Take dope. a vote and let us know if you want that <laughs> shit too. <laughs> and all up to you democracy time. All right. Straight. So we out until Wednesday at 9 o'clock. Don't vote for Trump. We'll see you next time. <laughs> we'll see you uh, before that. What are you talking about? It's not until November. We don't want a racist person What's in that? the office. Oh, I say, nobody can even vote till November anyhow. Right. Well, my mom fucking will kill us if anybody votes for Trump. <laughs> <laughs> I don't vote at all, so I'm not voting for anybody. I actually right. registered the vote my mom made me. Wow. And not she, vote for she, Trump? She is militant. Like, are, you, are you registered to vote, Rob? Yes. Yeah, you ain't getting by mom, man. I know. There's there's no getting by her or 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 or, or Samantha. They're 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 militant and they will they will make sure. They want to make there. sure you vote for Trump. And, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, right. No. All right. It so, ain't like it ain't like the, the 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 guy. I don't know anything about politics. I only know Trump was wilding out here, man. All right. Anyway, we are out of here. We'll see you next time. Join us on Wednesday, nine o'clock. Peace. Woo woo! Yeah! Cloud love, everybody! That's right.